Come on. You love that. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the BAFTA Games Awards in 2023. My name is Julia Hardy. Yes, and I am Inel Tomlinson. We are at the prestigious Queen Elizabeth Hall in London South Bank, where the who's who of games royalty have gathered to find out who will be taking home a coveted BAFTA award. <laughs> well, the ceremony is going to kick off in about ah, T minus 10 minutes or so. Mm. And we're going to be here all night giving you the best commentary throughout. But no pressure, but yeah, the best. The best of the, the best. best. Best of the best. Wait, better be. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> During the ceremony, me and Jula will be giving our thoughts on all the talented winners and nominees. And stick around because after the ceremony ends, we'll be right back here for the best debrief you've ever seen best. in the form of our post show party. Yeah. Right. Featuring right. interviews with some of the stars and tonight's awards. Oh, that's, that's a mouthful, that was. Uh, hopefully you'll be breathing I'll in the post-show in between sentences. <sighs> yeah, look, there's so many exciting things uh, that are going to be happening this evening. Yeah. So it's going to be really good fun. I'm super happy I'm here with Inel. We've got the nominees, we've got the games, we've got the speeches. Um, there's also whether I'm going to really like keep my cool when uh, Holota Mohlin like, oh, walks past yeah, from yeah. Immortality. Oh, yeah. It, play it cool, play it cool. I mean, I don't think it's that cool because I actually did just copy her hairstyle, oh, basically. Yeah, I, I just I dyed my it. hair because I thought she was cool. It's nice, though. I know. I like it. I will. I'm, it's I'm it's intense. It is. That's yeah. what I wanted. Okay. That's what I wanted. I wanted the ability to look at someone in the eye and just terrify them. Raw. Oh. I was inspired by that game. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, that's just weird. Yeah. Right, anyway. But, <laughs> <laughs> but before we get started with all of that out there, there is one little thing of the night before. Oh, yes, that's right. That's right. The BAFTA Game Awards nominees party at Landing 42. We went to the... We sent the brilliant Aoife... Will <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, we did. You sent us. We sent the brilliant Aoife Wilson to check out the glitz and glam of the party to probe our guests and nominees. Yeah, well, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't think it was like a formal invite. Aoife Wilson, ah, she somehow just... she, she smells a party on the wind and then suddenly just turns up, like, I promise you this. She was just there. She was just there. She didn't, we didn't even send an invite. Suddenly she's there with a the mic, off yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah. No, no pass or nothing. No, she just, you can walk in. She's Aoife Wilson. Uh, Let's see what, how she got on. here on the grind at the BAFTA Games Awards nominees party. I mean, we're not really on the grind. We're 42 stories in the sky right now. But we're here to chat to the best and brightest stars of the games industry, the nominees for the BAFTA Games Awards. How does it feel to be here? The best. Yeah. I am shocked and like in full awe to be nominated in this category with everyone else. Meeting some good friends already, so it's yeah. been amazing. I'm slightly overwhelmed, very excited. Oh wait, I forgot, I had a pun for this. You're looking immaculata. Oh, there we that's go. That's something, that's There we go. <laughs> yeah, I've never been over here to this, uh, to, the, to Europe, to the UK. No way, is this your first yeah, time? It's my first time, I brought my mom here, so it's... Was there any other games this year that you played that you really enjoyed? The one I keep mentioning, because I just played it, is Pentiment. I'm a big gamer myself, so uh, I played a lot of God of War. I just went down the like deep dive of immortality, oh. and I am obsessed. The game I played this year I loved the most was Pentiment. And oh. I was so happy to see the game stray, you know, like uh, becoming the buzz, and uh, people enjoying playing games and posting videos of their Cats, you know. It's astounding to watch. It's to not only watch as an actor, but astounding to watch as a fan. Yes. It's, it's such a victory for games in general. Thank you, Eva, you nominees party queen. Oh, what a party. It was a seriously good party. Oh, yeah. Bit too good party for some of the people who turned up today, I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look, you know it's going to be a really good night. Yeah. One of the best things about these nominees parties, it's like the time where basically all this amazing talent is mm. all in one room. It's all like, room. who's who? But then you've got all these like kind of, it's like all these universes crossing over. Do you know what I mean? You've <laughs> yeah, got like is, yeah. you've got immortality, chatting to like God of War and like, you know, that. that That's what really I loved. Cool. I just like walking around and I was like, oh, I recognise that game, recognise that game. I was like, played that, clocked that. Platinum, platinum that. Yeah, platinum that. Is that <laughs> please tell me you didn't do that to Christopher Jones. I went up to his that. face, I said, platinum that. I will give you 10 English pounds if you do that. Like, no, don't. Please don't. Anyway, well... <laughs> right. Back to tonight, though. Back to tonight. It's the kind of star-studded event that we've come to expect from BAFTA. The best and the brightest of the games world are heading into the auditorium right now as I speak. 
That's true. And mm. then after the ceremony, not only are, gonna, are we going to be chatting to some of the stars of tonight's awards, but I know here is uh, going to be you know, playing through some of those nominated games with a few special guests. Haven't yeah. You haven't told me who that exactly is. Yet. Oh, I can't say who it is, but let's just say I might go for a couple of trophies, maybe platinum that. Just know. don't do that in front I'm of I'm going to make things. that a thing. That's, That's going to be rude. a new thing. Be anyway, <laughs> also, but I suppose we should maybe talk about like what have been some of your favourite games of oh, this year. Do you know what? Do you know what game I was loved this year? I've been playing through Tunic. Oh, yeah, cute. Tunic's an awesome cute. adventure game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you play as a little fox. And it's, it's, it's reminiscent of like uh, the Legend of Zelda back on the Super Nintendo very, days. Yeah. And uh, one of the main f amazing things that you get to do is you pick up pages of an instruction book and you kind of okay. put them together. Right. Secrets everywhere, but I'm stuck in the game. You're stuck? Yeah, you're stuck. It's actually a bit trickier than you think it's going to be because you think it's like super cute and you're like, mm -hmm. uh. But also, actually, wait, you do um, you do horrible history, so I feel like you've oh. been in a lot of tunics this year. That game loves, I mean, sorry, that show loves a tunic. Oh, loves a tunic. I, I think How I many tunics have you been in this year? Tallied it up, Julia. 105 no. tunics. Are you, did you actually tally it up? Because that sounds probably quite accurate. Yes. I've seen your Instagram stories. 105. There's a lot of tunics. 105 tunics, Julia. A yes. lot of weird beards as well. Oh, well, oh, oh, no, that was mine. Oh, that, that's that was, awkward. That was my bit. <laughs> what have you been playing, Julia? <laughs> Moving swiftly on from the weird beards. <laughs> yes. um, no, actually, it's a good segue. There was a lot of weird beards in the next game, which is The Curse of the Golden Isle. Oh, that that's segue. a good game. Um, so I feel it's like the kind of spiritual successor to like The Return of the Obra Dinn, which I'm I was with you there. obsessed with. I mean, just completely groundbreaking. And in the same way, this sort of feels that kind of vibe. If you haven't played it, it's kind of like you're trying to work out. People keep getting cursed by this golden idol mm -hmm. and you have to like work out. You look at like a little mise en scène. Oh, I, hold on with the fancy words. This is BAFTA. Oh, sorry, darling. Yeah, that's what happens. Um, a little kind of like scene effectively where you're trying to work out just exactly how somebody passed away because of this curse of this mm -hmm. idol. Uh, so you can kind of like, you have to work out who everybody is. There's kind of little clues. You can look in people's pockets and stuff yeah. like that. It basically, and the, okay. so the aesthetic is sort of slightly grotesque in that <laughs> it looks like, say, so imagine like, you know, Vermeer, like <laughs> Vermeer had like basically done like some sort of like paintings using MS paint. Mm -hmm. Like really, like people look at The really old windows days. Yeah. Old, yeah, with natural light only. Natural light, yeah. Barely a candle. Only a couple, could only it. a few selections of colours. Yeah. <laughs> it's it sort of, yeah, the aesthetic is kind Kind of grotesque, but that's sort of what adds to its yeah. charm. It's, it's got a nightmarish weird. charm about it, and I think the music <laughs> helps with it. Charm. Yeah, the music right. really helps with it, though. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's let's carry on. We're forgetting. There's people watching us, Julia. Yeah. Right, you lovely lot at home. All right, tonight isn't your everyday awards show, is it? No, 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 no. We want you to get involved <laughs> as well. So hop into the chat and tell us who you think is going to win tonight. So every year at the BAFTA Awards, I love to predict who's going to win, like mm. some sort of like bingo. No one ever pays me any money. I just like to do it because I like being the smartest person in the room. Okay. Who doesn't? Yeah. So I kind of thought we could do a little bit with chat right now. Right. Um, so I thought what I'd do is basically ask you guys who you think is going to win from these three categories. And I want you to post the answers in the chat. And then we can look back through chat later and see who guessed right. I like that. Win, I like that. Right? You know, what's the categories? Let's okay, go. So I made sure I picked categories so they can't be like where there's like the same game and different ones. So it's going to get confusing. So they're all completely different names, completely different answers. Yeah. So you ready? Pen and paper. Okay. British game. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Best multiplayer. Oh, that's going to be a tough one. And even harder, performer in the leading role. Who do you think is going to win that? Put it in the chat. Yeah, put it in the chat right now, and we'll see later if you're actually a literal wizard, and <laughs> I'll also be asking you what the lottery numbers are. And keep that conversation <laughs> going across all the BAFTA social channels using the hashtag BAFTA Games Awards. Yeah. So the BAFTA Games Awards has actually been around since 2004, which is actually a fact that I, I only found that out this year. That's oh, a really so. long time. That's almost like two decades. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Rough maths. Look at you with the quick maths. Well, I mean, right. it's very rough. Very rough maths. <laughs> estimate, uh, yeah? Estimate. Just, just everything is an estimate. Everything in my life is an estimate, I know. Um, but basically, BAFTA does some incredible work to support the games industry mm -hmm. and people at all stages of their careers. I mean, you know, from up-and-coming designers who are still in school all the way through to, like, industry professionals as well. Oh, yeah. BAFTA YGD is an incredible initiative, so check that out. It makes me don't. concerned that I've done nothing with my life. They are so I incredibly know, talented so good. at such a young age. What are we doing? I don't know. I don't know. But if you are a budding designer out there, <laughs> Keep watching because you never know. One day you might be here, you know, with a game that you've been awarded with. Not you. Not me. No. Once, yeah, you, once you've hosted happening. it, you're not allowed to win a BAFTA. Is that probably. how it works? Yeah, you, what, did you read that I contract? I didn't read the contract yeah, properly. Well, there you go. So you should always read the small Is there still time kids. to back out? 
No. Okay. <laughs> on that note, later on, we're going to be showing some of the amazing work that BAFTA does to support the games industry. So make sure, make sure you stay tuned with us for that. Indeed. Tonight's ceremony will be hosted by the one and only Frankie, Frankie Ward. Ward. Yep, she'll be running the show from that shiny, or should I say neon stage. Um, I had a sneak peek as well. Her dress is, I don't know what's shinier, the stage or... Her. Indeed. It'll well, be a tough call. She's literally herding all the people in there at the minute. And all Wait, the she's got to do that as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, literally, Frankie's she's, just... She's door staff now. <laughs> Could you imagine that? <laughs> Get in. Basically, she's holding the whole show together. It's, 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 one, it's a one-lady show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. There's a lot of pressure. Uh, but, you know, I've got, like, no doubt. I know Frankie. She's an amazing host, and she's going to absolutely smash it. Like, no Indeed. doubt, no doubt. And tonight, so there are 45 nominated games spread okay. across 18 categories. And, you know, like, for so many nominees, tonight's awards are a culmination of years and years of hard work. It really is. And, um, yeah, I guess... Actually, you know what? I'm going to... I was asking you kind of what games you liked and yeah. that you enjoy playing, but I want to know what games did you get, like, fully obsessed with and immersed into? Oh, there's quite like, a Like, few. deeply. I'm not just like, oh, I played it, I liked it. What did you get a bit obsessed with and oh, get, wow. like, a bit too far into? You really want to really know? Well, I mean, I'm asking, aren't I? All right, yeah. first up, right. yeah, Oli Oli World. Yeah. Love that Great game. Great game. Yeah, fantastic very game. very high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell, you, tell you what, like, I look like a proper skater because you can in create your own character in Oli Oli World yeah. and it has like a, such a cool aesthetic. You like, don't take have... A look, take a look. You, 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 you do not... Look at that. Wow. Look at that guy. This is somehow how I exactly expected Inel to look as a skater, weirdly. It's not surprising. It doesn't look right. Check the hair, check the hair. Perfect. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it. It's very hard to not look yeah. at the hair. Well, well, well. I wasn't just playing that. I was also playing I'm Trombone really Champ. I'm really about where this is going. Fantastic game. You played Trombone Champ before. Yeah. Actually, to be honest with you, if you were to say, like, what is Inel in a game, yeah. I would say Trombone Champ because it's just like a boisterous, noisy thing. Check that. Check that. Are you nasty? Nasty. What? nasty. <laughs> with the eye contact, I don't know if I approve of the text of that. Yeah, you sure? All right, no. all right, all right. No. I was, I, as I said earlier, I've also been playing Tunic. Yeah. Check this out, check this out. Yeah. Yeah. All right, zoom in, zoom in. Yeah, <laughs> look at is that. that. Is that where you're stuck in the game? Mm. That feels like early on. Yeah, that is, that's actually the first area. <laughs> so <laughs> many secrets. How do you secrets. use a controller? So many secrets. That's that. not secrets. That's Listen, not going out of the stairs. I've also been yeah. playing, yeah, God of War Ragnarok. Like everybody course, else in everyone's November. everyone's been playing God of War yeah, Ragnarok. Back in November, uh, everyone yeah. was playing it. It's up for so many awards tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But have you been playing it like I've been playing it? Check I don't out. know. I don't think Check I want to. Check this out, Julia. Bam. Yeah. Actually, wait, I take that back. Yeah. That actually looks really good. Yeah, who's the dad now? I would actually play that. Yeah, that who's looks the legit. God? God of War. You oh. see it? And also, I've been playing, uh, been playing this one. Okay. You know this one? Yeah. Yeah? What game is this? What game is this? <sighs> I mean, I yeah. hope it's Stray, because if it's anything else, I'm concerned for your... This is, this is Tarquin. You know Tarquin? Yeah. Say hello to Tarquin. I'm not saying hello to a stuffed cat. Yeah, come on. On the live stream. You said you love Stray. I like the game. Yeah, but this it's is this is the cat odd from that the you're game. You're sitting there in a suit, stroking a stuffed toy, well, giving me eye contact. I'm well, listen, like, like it's not exactly like we can get a real cat on there and I can start stroking well, it why live. Why not? I, I mean, there's there's so there's so much there's so many I logistics around a setup chaos. like this. But we all know that they're cute and they meow. Well, I mean, I, I asked for a CG one, but too expensive. Too expensive. Too expensive. It's too expensive. I did Look, ask the developers. They spent all the money on the sign. You see what I'm saying? Neon everywhere. <laughs> 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 Well, well it, it goes with this. It was strange. There's loads of neon. You need lights. to stop stroking that. It's so Should odd. I just I stop? Know. It's so. Is it the fact that I'm staring that at you and doing it? Is that what I have? Contact. I don't know. This is. I don't really think this like stuffed toy pet really culminates. I don't know. The, like, the cuteness of stray somehow. Everybody at home, let me know. Yeah, is this creepy? You... Just like sitting there stroking the cat. <laughs> what I don't. Did you just ask Twitch so. chat if Listen, something is creepy? Twitch chat. Be honest. Yeah. No. Come on. Why would you do that? Come on. Yeah. Look. <laughs> Have you... you telling me there's not people at home watching your walls right now stroking their Yeah. Oh, OK, <laughs> look, I feel we should change the subject now. He's going okay. down a weird dark hole. But, um, yeah, I was trying to... Um, I'm really excited because, obviously, later on, we're going to be having some interviews with some of the people from, like, my favourite games and that. Um, Immortality. Oh. OK, so I really love Sam Barlow. Have yeah. you played any of his other Her games? Story. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah fantastic. That was... Okay, I don't want to spoil it. It's still, even though it's it was ages ago, won three Baftas. I think it was, I, yeah. But I, but I don't want to like spoil it just in case people haven't still played it, even though it's like it's hard to it's hard to even explain what the type of game is. But you could spoil it. You could. Don't. Yeah. We're not gonna. Don't even. No. Just play it. Just tell people to yeah. play, play the game. If you liked her story, it's a sort of it feels like it's a, you know moving forward from that. Yeah. But honestly, what um, a similar vibe that you get. 
Very much so. And like, mm. honestly, Man and Gage, I don't know how, like, as an actor, because obviously it's like about an actress. Yeah. So you've got like that character, then you've got like three films within it. Mm -hmm. um, actually, she said a really interesting thing at one of the BAFTA talks the, um, the other week where she was like, she was really, really glad that they filmed it sequentially. Because okay. she was like, otherwise, I probably would have like lost my mind. It's because it's yeah, so. Yeah, that would have been a crazy one to fil film out of order. Like, if you imagine if it was the order that he. In, like he wanted like the best order. What is the best order? I don't know. I got to the end quite quickly and was like, what's happening? This is awful. Oh, is it? Yeah. Did you go back to no, numerous no, no, times I went to fully see back. The, I yeah. mean, like, without spoilers, did you, to see the scenes and yep. in the new light? Yeah. You did? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot. Because when you re-watch it... Um, it's yeah. very hard to discuss this without giving it's, things away. We're, we're talking around spoilers to see how good we are. Yeah, We could just spoil the entire game and then you don't even have to play it, but we're being yeah. that nice. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I, honestly, I love that. I thought. Um, although I do feel it was like kind of like how many times did you like click on like a glass like for the like fiftieth time? I was just like, trying to rewind several times. Just yeah. Like, no, go back a bit. <laughs> what What did you think when the first time? Because obviously it's down spoilers. To, why? Why? Uh, why? Well, I'm not saying how it happens, but you remember the first time it happened, and then you were like, Whoa, "Wait, what?" Uh -huh. All right. I tell you what. Yeah. Give me the Give me the facial expression that you made when you when you saw. Oh, you, that was. I think it was roughly. It was just like. Just, uh, 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 what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a accurate, accurate face, I think, honestly, oh, I don't know. Fair it's, play. Um, I like, hey, listen, it's an absolutely fantastic game and it well deserves all the nominations it's got. What else would you give a shout out to? Oh, do you know what? Media Molecule for Dreams for <gasps> Best Evolving Game, come on. I keep meaning to play it and you I keep seeing the things and I haven't played it and every time I regret that I haven't played it because it's just like oh, so incredible, good. so Amazing creative. creations yeah. and like, it's Constantly, every time you sign on, there's something new for you to discover. People and actually make games in the fully game. Fully-fledged like games. Fully-fledged games in there's the game. There's some games in Dreams it's that are better than some of the AAA. It's the of games. It, it's a game within a game. Within a game? Within another game. Oh, no, is it like one of those infinite pictures you see on TikTok? Oh, that's you know, in where there it just goes. That's in there as well. No. People make those. What, in? Yeah. Listen, I was playing an escape room game that someone made, and literally, I was there for eight hours playing this escape room. It was that well designed. Do you do any other work, I know? I just play games. Just... Just my games. <laughs> and stroke. Okay. Yeah, you're still stroking that. It's still kind of, kind of weird. Sort of creepy. Yeah. I, I think the chat likes it. I'm pretty certain the messages I'm right now are very positive. I'm glad that we don't have chat very here, positive. I don't really think we Very know. positive. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, we've got some, like, amazing, amazing uh, games tonight. I don't know. I'm normally, I normally feel like I can call it. I don't know what everyone's been saying in chat about who they think, uh, you know, is going to win, like, a, a Best British and, you know, Best Performance, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Normally, I find it easy to guess. This year, I'm really stumped. I don't know which oh. way it's going to go. It's, it's, it's because there's so many talented games, like so many talented developers, sorry. So many talented performances, like look at the yeah. roster of actors, like supporting. Oh my God. Yeah, it's, it is. Pretty... I wouldn't be able to call that one. No. I wouldn't be able to call like mm -hmm. either the best performer or best yep. supporting. I wouldn't yep. be able to call it. Right. Very there close. You go. But oh, I believe. I, believe I don't even have an earpiece. Julia, though. I ready? believe we're about to start the ceremony. Yeah, yep. we're actually nearly ready for the ceremony to start. So, Grab a drink, get comfy, and let the show begin. <laughs>
please welcome your host, Frankie Ward. Good evening, my fellow game fanatics. Welcome to the BAFTA Games Awards. My name is Frankie Ward, but you, my little lambs, may refer to me as my cult leader name. Big fluff stuff. <laughs> Let me first say how honoured I am to be here. I have not felt this humbled since my first run at Tunic, which I still haven't managed to complete. The pages, the darn pages. But what a way to start the show. An awesome performance by Chipsell, Aaron Grime and John Connor, and performing a mix of some iconic and impactful game theme tunes from the 90s to the present day. It's been an incredible 12 months for our industry. You know it's a good year in games when your two main memories are fighting Odin and playing Through the Fire and Flames on the trombone. <laughs> Tonight's awards celebrate everything that's excellent about gaming. All of us are part of that ever-growing club that knows just how powerful games can be. Tonight, we're streaming live on the website constructed almost entirely out of USB microphones and capo remotes, Twitch. So, say hello to the internet, everyone. Come on. Yes. And I am sure the comments on there, like all comments on the internet, are nothing but positive. Of course, before we get started, we'd like to thank our official games partners, Epic Games, PlayStation and Xbox, and our audience award sponsor, EE. Us gamers have really been spoiled in the last year. We witnessed the beauty of Elden Ring before throwing our controllers against the wall because of Elden Ring. We wandered Amsterdam streets in Call of Duty that was so realistic, I had to stop myself from nipping into a coffee shop. And we fought robot dinosaurs, Norse gods, a Lego Darth Vader, and thanks to Kirby, fulfilled our lifelong dreams of swallowing a car. Sifu proved that death is just a journey. Immortality showed that mediums can be bent, and Stray proved that you can have a powerful story about a cat without the need for CGI rectums or James Corden. <laughs> and that's why we're here, to give back to you, the talented people who have given us so much over the last year. Tonight offers a chance to celebrate the brilliant creators of an industry I'm proud to be a minuscule part of. So, sit back, relax, and let's play. Our first award is a personal favorite of mine. Animation is at the heart of the industry. We have all experienced the awe of gazing at a perfectly rendered galactic skyline, or a million pieces of Ico explode from a terrifyingly realistic zombie none of which would be possible without incredible animators. To present our award for animation, please welcome comedian, internet phenomenon, and star of Taskmaster, the fabulous Manya Chihuahua. <clears throat> Before we start, just to let you know the reason I'm talking like this is because I've lost my voice, okay? I am not auditioning for Kratos. <laughs> Boy. So, the magic of animation is in its ability to immerse the world uh, and to take us into another world. The best animation transports you, lets you lose yourself in the moment, and makes you forget that what you're seeing isn't real. For example, you may not realize this, but my eyebrows are entirely CGI and the right one is being played by Andy Serkis. <laughs> the nominees for best, eyebrow, uh, best animation is...
All right, here we go. And the BAFTA goes to... God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> Look at that, look yeah. at that, yeah. Amazing set piece animations from this game. Mm. Like, oh. Honestly, it was joy for your eyes from Listen. start to finish, even though you were like fighting bosses, getting a little bit. Oh you know, yeah, fighting. the double takedowns, especially when Kratos grabs it, grabs an enemy, Atreus flips over, shoots him with the bowl. Fantastic. Honestly, that's so well deserved. Ooh. Oh wow, no pressure, right? The first one up. Uh, did you see that? All those nominees, it's amazing. It's truly an honor to be uh, con really given this award considering all the talent of all the animators in, in, that we just saw up there. So uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to be up here to represent uh, Santa Monica Studios. They work so hard on this game. They put everything, all the passion behind it. Uh, the animation team, I really want to say thank you so much for all your passion. For uh, It was an honor to really be uh, in it in the trenches with all of you. and. Hopefully you're watching this. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's an honor to be uh, part of this team with all of you. I want to thank our cast. Many of them are here. Uh, thank you for putting up with all these instructions on the set of like, actually the outline is up here and uh, there will be a giant snake over here, trust me. Uh, and of course, uh, I want to thank our animation production team. I want to thank everybody else that contributed to the animation, like our Breakables team, Tech Art, uh, our amazing leads, Erica Pinto, Mehdi Yousef, Axel Grossman, uh, James Sweeney, our uh, gameplay engineering team. Uh, there's so many people that go into making uh, animation work in our game. Uh, everyone that spent the time implementing any of our animation in the game, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And I really uh, want to thank our fans and, of course, our families, how we can forget our families for all their support. Uh, a special, especially for me, my, my wife, Kyung Hee, uh, my daughter, Olivia and Sophia, I love you. I'll be home tomorrow, and thank you so much. For many, creating a game isn't just a one-off experience. It's more akin to raising a child. You have to constantly care for it, help it grow, all the while praying it won't get any bugs. This next award celebrates those creatives who continue to expand and improve upon their titles year after year. And to present the award for Evolving Game, please welcome streamer and Twitch ambassador, Sharice. There are certain titles that knock out the park. Update. These games have that incredible ability to innovate, refresh, and rejuvenate their IPs, constantly evolving an experience and resulting in games that continue to delight long after the initial release. These titles listed in the category are shining examples of that. The nominees for Evolving Game are... And the BAFTA goes to 
Final Fantasy. Wow! Yeah. Final Fantasy XIV Online. But I tell you what, the story of this development needs deserves its own movie. <laughs> <laughs> it deserves a movie. Congratulations to Square Enix on that one. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I can't tell you the amount of mates who have just been like playing this non-stop. Yeah, it's. it's... It's one of those games that has had like a, such a fantastic story behind it in terms of development and how yeah. the fans have supported it. Let's hear what they have to say. Oh. Hi. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, Yoshida-san and the rest of the dev team couldn't be here tonight, so we are accepting this on their behalf. Um, this year marks 10 years since the relaunch of A Ram Reborn, so I think we'd just like to thank absolutely everyone who's touched the game in that time, uh, from our amazing developers in Japan, through all our community and service teams, our games masters, QA, localization, PR, marketing, finance, like legal, absolutely everyone. And ultimately, of course, to our players, who are the reason we do absolutely everything we do. Um, it has been an astonishing 10 years. Um, here's to the next 10. Thank you very much. <laughs> Creating a brand new character or IP is no mean feat, but not for the nominees of Original Property. And to present that award, please welcome one of GameSpot's most beloved hosts and a man who had to be dragged away from a loathsome dung eater to be with you tonight. It's Lucy James and Tamar Hussein. There's nothing more exciting than when a truly new concept comes out of nowhere and dominates the industry. And being able to experience the work of some of the most original and creative people in the world is a true privilege. Which is why it is such a pleasure to present the next award. The nominees for Original Property are... And the BAFTA goes to Elden Ring. Ooh. I mean, yeah. it's not usually surprising at all. I mean, like, I don't think I've ever seen like the entire world be so gripped. Oh yeah. It was like we all went into hibernation. No one was really going outside Literally, talking to each other. March, don't talk to me. I'm yeah. in the land between. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, That's I mean, I'm yeah, just absolutely stellar work there. Just I think a couple of people still playing it. I'm still playing it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what they have to say. Yeah. Congratulations to Fox. Thank you very much for this wonderful award. So, whatever,としてもですね、あの過去最大でま大きなチャレンジを含んだプロジェクトでしたので、こうしたまあ、素晴らしい結果につながってとても嬉しいです。It was a big challenge for us, and in fact, we had to work very hard on this title. And as a director, I'm very happy to see such a great result. はい、ですね。この結果をまあ次にあのまたより面白いですね。新しいゲーム作っていきたいと思ってますので、ぜひご期待いただければと思います。本当にありがとうございました。
We will continue to create a new games that everyone will enjoy. I hope you will continue to look forward to it. Thank you very much. Congratulations to the Elden Ring team on an incredible win. The next category celebrates outstanding audio achievement in the industry. Quality audio can truly make or break a game, and as a community, we are blessed to be in an era where some truly astonishing audio work has been achieved. With every swish of a weapon, cry of an enemy, and beep of a keycard, our ears have been treated to some absolutely amazing auditory adventures in 2022. And the following titles have been at the forefront of this. The nominees for audio achievement are... Do it! Quick! Control! You go! The ghost of Sparta thing? Yeah. You know what I'm capable of. Shame! And the BAFTA goes to God of War Ragnarok. Wow, God of War, there we go. Second win for tonight. I'll tell you what, some crunchy sound effects there, Julia. <laughs> crunchy. I don't, know, I don't know if that's the category like in the jury. Like, crunchy. how crunchy? Yeah. Very crunchy, but yeah. Also, you can hear like the snow just landing. When you walk on the snow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time Kratos is hitting enemies, I thought I got hit. Um, thank you so much for this incredible honor. It's amazing to be nominated which, with such phenomenal sounding games. Uh, we'd like to accept this award on behalf of all of the entire group at PlayStation Studio Sound and uh, huge thanks to our partners in music, localization, creative arts, visual arts, and all of our development partners. And a massive thanks to Santa Monica Studio and the entire team there. They continue to develop such amazing games, and it's just a treat to be able to work on them. I'm breaking the rules. Um, <laughs> I'd like to thank all our families and loved ones for the, you know, it's like, I'm going to say sacrifice, because there's a lot of passion that goes into this. Sometimes we're not home for a long time. And uh, it means a lot to us that you support us in this way. And I love you, Izzy, and I'll be home soon. Thanks. For BAFTA, the importance of games isn't just about tonight. As everyone in this room knows, the industry needs to be nurtured, with talent from all backgrounds being offered opportunities and space to let their exciting ideas flourish. Here are just some of the incredible things that BAFTA has been up to. I think BAFTA is really important because it's always seen in the industry as being a real marker of quality. It's a really important organisation in terms of how the games industry should be seen as important in this country as film and TV to be seen on an equal footing with them. The creativity and the imagination in games has always been like, fantastic. You know, if you look at the animation, if you look at the graphics, if you look at the music, it, it is art. Making games is pretty hard. You learn to embrace uncertainty. It was incredible to see just the positive reception, the, the award nominations. 
uh, the crowning jewels of which, of course, were the BAFTAs that we won. Holy doodle! BAFTA for me is a kind of like possibility. There's this bubbly energy of how do these different creative industries seed in each other and learn from each other and develop something that can only happen in this space where we're all talking to each other. Hello Yorkshire Games Festival. BAFTA have been putting on masterclasses, uh, networking. Tonight is a game social and it's the first one I've been to and apparently it's the busiest one yet. We come, we gather <laughs> and you, we get to connect. BAFTA is the place where you meet your contemporaries. It has been an honor to be here and meet so many clever creatives. We're also meeting the rising stars in our industry. Hi! Welcome to the 2022 BAFTA Young Game Designers Award. BAFTA have recognized the small to the big in what they're telling and what they want to communicate to the world and how we all connect to each other. So it doesn't matter where you come from that you're going to get recognized. I definitely want to get a career path from this. I definitely want to keep improving and I definitely want to get a job in the industry. As a result of being a BAFTA breakthrough, it, it's kind of spread worldwide. And I think it's been like an explosion for me and, and something that's uh, occurred quite quickly. It's there to support, to help gain and spread knowledge and experience and expertise, to share expertise down through the ages, mentoring people who are just getting onto the ladder. It's there to support all of us working in the entertainment industry. A great philosopher once said, I believe the children are our future. And nowhere is that more clear than in games. Honestly, game designers are getting younger and younger at this stage, they're pretty much coding in the womb. The next award is for game design. So who better to present it than two of the winners of last year's BAFTA Young Game Designer competition? Please welcome Jamie Williams and Alfie Wilkinson. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here, surrounded by all you old people. <laughs> Jamie's joking, of course. We don't see you as old people. We see you as future employees. So if anyone wants to get a head start and give us their CV after the show, just let us know. Strikes aside, as two young designers, we know the importance of game design, and the candidates in this next award know a thing or two about doing it well. It's an honour to be surrounded by so many incredibly talented people, and we look forward to hopefully working with many of you in the future. The nominees for game design are... And the BAFTA goes to... Vampire Survivors! Oh. 
amazing work mm. from the guys from Vampire Survivors. Honestly, it is a game unlike any other. Like, yeah. I don't think anyone could have predicted. I don't know how you describe it. Yeah, I, if you try and describe, describe it right now. I don't know. I just say, well done to the team at Ponco. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's such an incredible game, so surprising, like, to play. Ooh. Right, uh, right, well, let's get one thing out of the way. I'm not Luca, um, <laughs> but I am so proud to accept this award on behalf of everyone at Ponkel, and we're so grateful to BAFTA for even being nominated. We at Ponko are firm believers that no piece of art is a solo venture, even when Vampire Survivors was nothing more than a twinkle in Luca's enigmatic eyes. Uh, it owed so much the influence and the hard work of the people who came before him. And since then, the team has grown and grown, and I personally feel remiss without mentioning everyone. So, to Guru, David, Duncan, Gio, <laughs> <laughs> Checking if it was you, I mean, Geo, Julie, Lucy, Beth, Sam, Adam, Matt, Aaron, John, Danielle, and everyone's favourite tiramisu scoffing overlord, Luca, and of course all the hard workers who make the industry what it is. Uh, if I've forgotten anyone, you can send me an angry email later, uh, but you do count as well. Thank you very much. for next year's awards because I have a feeling we've just met our next presenters. Fish and chips. Morris dancing. Cheering when someone drops a glass in a pub. I imagine that might be happening later on tonight as well. Just some of the incredible things Britain has given to the world. And as a nation, we continue to innovate, delight and entertain with some of the incredible British games that have been released over the last year. Here to present the award for British Game, I'm delighted to introduce the head of Xbox Creator Experience, Sarah Bond. As an immersive art form, video games connect with us through interactive storytelling and unite us through social connectivity and empathy. They truly are a unique form of entertainment. As someone who spent my most formative years in the UK, I have seen how British game industry has shaped the global games landscape, producing some of the most iconic, moving, and groundbreaking titles in history. From indie studios to major publishers, from classic franchises to new IPs, British developers continue to push the boundaries of what is possible. And this year has been no exception. The nominees for Best British Game are...
And the BAFTA goes to Roller Dome. Wow, well done to Roller Dome there. Well done to Roll 7. Also, Roll 7, uh, uh, from the developers of Elio World as well. It's the coolest looking game ever. I mean, the learning curve, a lo little bit steep. Yeah. So, I just have so many things to do. Tony Hawk and shooting. That's what it is. So Skaters, many things to do. There's guns. a lot of multitasking going is, on. Yeah. There. That's brilliant. So Such fun. A great game. Super arcadey as well. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Oi, oi, BAFTA! <laughs> I, uh, I'll level with you. I don't really have anything prepared because I really didn't think we were going to win. <laughs> I thought Vampire Survivors was going to get it. <laughs> um, when it comes to thank yous, like, I've got to start with um, basically thanking uh, these three gentlemen here, uh, the, uh, the founders of Roll7, um, great leadership, you know, a great culture starts at the top and they created an environment in which we could succeed. They trusted us to make the game we wanted to make and it turned out great. Um, I want to thank the entire Roller Drone team. You smashed it. We knew we were onto something special when we were working on it and it turned out great. Um, I can't name you all, but I'm going to mention two people specifically. Antoine, who was our lead artist, who is responsible for it looking the way it does. It's beautiful. Antoine, we love you. And uh, Paul Rabbit, who is the creative director and the guy responsible for the gifts that you all saw on Twitter that uh, created you know, those gifts that became the game, that became Rollerdrome. Um, uh, I feel so privileged to have been given the opportunity to be the lead designer on the project. Um, so yeah, I just want to big up, big up everyone at Roll7. You're all amazing. It's the best company I've ever worked for. And I just want to say thank you to all it, like everyone that was involved in, in nominating it, because like, you know, that 10-year-old kid that was playing Mega Drive games never thought that they'd have a seat at the table. And here we are today, you like? Thank you. <laughs> I don't think they have selfie breaks at the Film Awards. <laughs> Artistic achievement involves all visual elements of a game. You might say it rocks harder than a beautifully rendered boulder in ray trace sunlight and games will crumble without it. To present the award for artistic achievement, please welcome star of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Melisanthi Mahout. <laughs> I didn't drop it, that's good. Okay. Hi, everyone. The games industry continues to push the boundaries of what's possible artistically, allowing us to immerse ourselves in worlds that are both visually stunning, but also creatively unique. This award recognizes those titles that have gone above and beyond artistically, inspiring both gamers and the industry itself to dream bigger and aim higher. The nominees for artistic achievement are
Okay. And the BAFTA goes to Tunic. <laughs> Tunic. Absolutely gorgeous. Yep. We were literally just saying as we were watching that clip, like you could take a screen grab at any moment, stunning. Yeah. Menus? Oh. Menus stunning. Listen, I'm, I'm afraid that. Julia, I will buy that instruction book right now. <laughs> just, I will buy it. I'll have it, I'll throw it. I'll have that. Absolutely. I need gorgeous. it to, to finish the game. I don't well. think you're gonna finish the that game. Well. That's something. I'm still stuck. I think a lot of people are stuck on it. It's, I don't think anyone has it, finished it. It's so cute, though. You just don't <laughs> expect it to be quite so tricksy. It's but a tricksy it game. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous-looking game, though. Well done to the yeah, team there. Yeah, super well done. <clears throat> Weird. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I'm here on behalf of a team, uh, some of whom are here and some of whom are elsewhere, um, specifically for artistic achievement. I think it's worth shouting out my collaborator, Eric Billingsley, as well as the illustrators, Ora Hack and Mako. Um, and thank you to um, uh, our partners at Xbox, um, Chris and, and Chloe. Um, one more. Karen, um, for seeing what this was supposed to be and, and helping make it happen and to our friends at, uh, at Sony and Nintendo and to our friends and family. Uh, Mom and Dad, I, I hope you got Twitch working and you're <laughs> watching this now. And to the entire team, to everyone who played, and to Kate, I love you. Thank you very much. Multiplayer games allow you to connect with some incredible people from across the world to inspire you, help you, or constantly kill you the moment you respawn. Yes, I'm talking about pretty much everyone on Twitch right now. Give me a chance. I am begging you. I am 34 and I do not have the reflexes to present the award for multiplayer. Please welcome actor, streamer, and star of the Inbetweeners, James Buckley. It's exciting, isn't it? Um, one of the amazing things about gaming is the ability to share your experience with others. The titles in this category have all shown an incredible dedication to the multiplayer aspect of the industry and prove that experiences are always better when there's someone to share them with. Let's take a look at the nominees for multiplayer. Brilliant technique, and it feels like there's more goals coming in this one. Oh, Silky from Vinicius. Smart dribbling from Son. Weaving into space. And the BAFTA goes to Elden Ring. 
Elden Ring takes it. There we go for best multiplayer game. It's not the first one you'd like think of within the category. I mean, really? obviously you have to find like the weird finger. Yeah, the, the finger thing. <laughs> well, do you know what? It's, it's all about the, the cryptic messages that people leave as well. Yeah. Love yeah. that as well, because you don't know whether to trust them or if they I help. I would say them. don't, mainly. Never trust Never trust, never trust the messages. Send off a ledge. There we go. There we game go. tips from Julia there. Well, I'm just, I'm just terrible at everything. <laughs> あの再びですけれども、素晴らしい賞いただきありがとうございます。Again, thank you very much for the wonderful world. あのこのゲームをですね、えっ、ー、と遊んで楽しんで支持してくれたユーザーさんをすべてにですね大きな感謝を伝えたいです。そうした素晴らしいユーザーさんがいなければ、エルデンリングのマルチプレイがこうして高く評価されることはなかったと思っています。I would like to express my utmost gratitude to the many users who have played, enjoyed, and supported this work. It is only with the support of so many wonderful users that the Elden Ring multiplayer has been able to achieve such a high level of success. To multiplayer, we have, as well, a lot of the potential, or even the enjoyment of the game, and we feel that in the future, we want to have a new way of multiplayer, a new enjoyment, and a new enjoyment. I want to thank you for coming today. Thank you very much. We still see a lot of potential and fun in the multiplayer, and we will continue to pursue in an own, our own way. Thank you very much. Thank you. The power of games is something that never ceases to amaze me. The stories told by the creators in our industry have been captivating audiences for years and now inspiring a new generation of adaptations in film and TV. Let's take a look at how the world of games are challenging previous conceptions and inspiring storytellers across the big and small screen. I think games are being co-opted by film and TV in a different way than it used to be. If you were making a big franchise movie, you had to have a game tie-in. But now, big broadcasters and the big film producers are starting to see it doesn't start with the film or TV show anymore. It starts with the story. And at the moment, the story is happening in games. Is everything you're hoping for? Got its ups and downs. I think people play video games at the end of the day because of the story. It's your chance to be a part of the story, so it makes sense that you would then want to see something fully realized that maybe you can't have as much control over, but you can enjoy in that same way. Bowser is coming. I'm not afraid. I'll do anything for my brother. We wanted to make something like Arcane because we've known these characters over a decade now. You know, day in and day out, we play games with them, but we've never really known them as people. Who are their friends? What are their hobbies? What do they think about the world? <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077 created a huge, exciting world, a great foundation for a TV show. But it brings one challenge. When you want to create something new, you have to balance between being original and keeping the consistency. At the very core is the game world and the game narrative. And then the challenge is, how do you take those things into the TV world, but also bring in the craft of TV storytelling? Because you need both to really come together in a way that speaks to the medium. Master Chief, huh? The Last of Us was a game that had a strong narrative. It had strong characterization. It had a cinematic approach to its world. So it was a gift because the storytelling of the game was so strong and so impactful. Cuphead is an action-focused game centered around boss battles. So the fun challenge was to find ways to share more detail about the world of the Inkwell Isles without spoiling all the mysteries. You do nothing but trouble. We love trouble. You want to be able to bring people into the universe who haven't experienced it in the games. And that's a tough balancing act. What I actually love about game adaptations is there's so many different directions people can go in. I know that anything I've ever been a fan of, I just wanted more ways into the world. We can really embrace it. We can embrace the worlds, the characters, the tonality of games, the quirkiness, 
um, the clunkiness. So as we're adapting games into movies and shows, a big question is like, should we stick to that? Should we stay true to our quirk? I think strong creators are actually going and working in games companies because they have more freedom and they get to create more interesting stories. And because of that, people are starting to take notice. <laughs> the continued popularity of games with powerful narratives where the fate of the storyline is in your sweaty little hands. To present the award for narrative, please welcome the original clicker killer from the BAFTA winning The Last of Us. It's Troy Baker. That's as long as they let me hold it. <laughs> Six times a charm. Storytelling in games offers a very unique experience. And, you know, when I, I played Joel in The Last of Us, I got... Joel? Joel? Joel, are you there? It's working? Joel, it's Ellie, oh. it's Ellie. Yeah, I... I uh, sorry, dude, I'm looking for Joel? Joel Miller? Yeah, I said I, I'm, I played Joel. <laughs> You're not Joel. Joel's hair is better. <laughs> Muscular, I okay, guess. that's not. Oh, necessary. just generally more rugged, to be honest. You know, maybe enough of that. I did play Joel, and Joel saved your life numerous times, numerous times. No. Not remember. Not sparking anything. Not sparking anything. Although you do kind of look like the guy who I put an axe in the neck. Yeah, that was. Oh. Hey, whatever your name is, I could do with some help here. Well, when I uh, the find the real Joel, I'll make sure. It's Can I just say how lucky I am that I got to find two Ellie's? That's incredible, that's incredible. All right, as I was saying, games don't just show you a narrative, they invite you to become a part of it. And with every slash, jump, and NPC interaction, we become more and more invested in the narrative until the story has us literally on the edge of our seats. The games in this category have all created those kinds of narratives that saturate your very being so that all you think about in between session is getting back on and continuing the story. The nominees for narrative are. Does this work as confession? Gains. And the BAFTA goes to Immortality. Oh. Immortality! Yes, I mean, we were just discussing about the narrative of immortality, and it really just depends which way around you do it, but it is yeah. amazing. We well, have to discover story. it, but when you do discover it, oh, 
like honestly, I yeah, I'm mind blown. This is this is very weird. The very some of the very first directing work I did in video games was with Troy. I don't know if you remember, he was an elf that was having sex, and <laughs> and no one realised yeah. that's what was happening because games didn't have sex in them, and there was a lot of explaining to do. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> What I, I crave in video game narratives is like specificity. I want to feel like I'm going down a very particular and kind of authentic special journey. And I think all the nominees here did that for me. So, you know, to be here is really special. Uh, with Immortality, we, we kind of gave ourselves permission to be indulgent and excessive and, and just go to a very weird place, uh, give ourselves enough rope to hang ourselves with. But it seems like it worked. Um, oh my god. Uh, thank you to my wife Claire, I love you. Uh, to my kids Andre and Camille, I'm sorry I disappeared for three months to go shoot three fictional <laughs> movies. Uh, thank you. Um, to our incredible cast and crew, uh, the team at Half Mermaid, Natalie, Connor, everyone else. You know, so many people helped us on this journey and, and made this thing come alive. Uh, thanks to BAFTA. Natalie, do you want to jump in? Um, I'm not going to cry like I did at GDC, so, um, but I'm glad other people are on the stage being emotional because this is, this is what it's all about. It's, um, these are, games are such a labor of love, and I know I've said that before, but I just feel honored to be in a room with my heroes and on a stage, and thank you, Sam, for taking me on this journey with you. I would, I would do it again in a heartbeat. It's just... This was Natalie's first chipped game. <laughs> Get a bath there. <laughs> To present the next award for performer in a supporting role, please welcome one of the most incredible performers working in the industry. It's the BAFTA award-winning star of Firewatch, and to be honest, one of the nicest people I have ever met in my life, Sissy Jones. What's up, BAFTA? Hi. Game development is and always has been a collaborative endeavor with numerous talented people all striving towards the same goal. The award for performer in a supporting role celebrates those brilliant performers who have brought gaming worlds to life through every cutscene, dialogue box, and acerbic enemy one-liner. After all, where would Mario be without Luigi and where would Ratchet be without Clank? <laughs> the nominees for performer in a supporting role are It's already done. Let it be known, the God of Thunder is good for two things. Killing giants and pissing me! They could stay in Jotunheim. Waiting for Odin to find a way in to slaughter them. Maybe could help me. My father. Help whisper their souls into these. The choice was made for me. She wanted to know what I was. I was on earth. I took her into the farm and had something about her. I can't remember all the faces. My friendship, my home, my secrets, my treasures. And you just kept taking. And now what have I got? <laughs> Not even my family. Hold your fire! By the word of the ancestors, you must stop. I need to find something that helps, something to bring back. The overseers will punish me. Or even worse, people will die. There is still a part of me. That is so... Angry. And it'll always be. It'll always be angry. And the BAFTA goes to Leia de Leon Hayes and God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow, Leia, congratulations on that. Angram Boulder, such a fantastic character in God of War as well, coming into the franchise. Oh. Yeah, I mean, to come into the franchise, mm. like, yeah, in the second game. And at such a I young love, age as well. Such a young age and such an amazingly stellar performance, yeah. honestly. That's you can definitely oh, she, see she's I'm well chuffed for her. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm so chuffed for her for that. Yeah, That's a fantastic one, and especially at such a, at the beginning of your career. <laughs> That's the winner. Oh my god. Hi. <laughs> I was just praying I didn't fall tonight. <laughs> um wow, I'm so emotional. Um just thank you so much. Um Thank you to BAFTA. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who played the game. <laughs> this is so weird. This is absolutely crazy. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, I was not expecting this. Um, just thank you to BAFTA One. Thank you to Santa Monica Studios um, <laughs> for this opportunity. Thank you to Matt. Thank you to Eric. Um, this is the first game that I've ever been a part of. And to play Angraboda, um, this is not a character that you get very often, um, especially as someone in my position. And so to play her has been just an absolute dream and incredibly surreal. I want to say thank you and congratulations to all the nominees who are absolutely incredible. Oh my gosh. Adam, Ryan, Danielle, you are all so phenomenal. I learned so much from you guys every single day I was on the mocap or at the mocap studio. Just your performances were so <laughs> incredible. And to be nominated was an honor. Um, and now to be carrying this is an honor. And I want to say also a shout out and a thank you to Christopher Judge and Sonny Soljic. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna try not to be too long, um, <laughs> but you both, I mean, the chemistry on screen and also to be there in person to work with you guys was an absolute dream. So thank you for being so generous and so incredible with your talent and kind to me. And thank you to everyone. Um, this is a night I will never forget. I can't believe I'm holding this. <laughs> thank you all so much. Oh, and mom and dad. <laughs> Halfway. Basically, this is the part of the playthrough where you definitely do a manual save just in case. When it comes to games, the soundtrack is at the forefront of storytelling. For example, it can be sweeping and dramatic to give you some gravitas. Quiet and tense to make you sound creepy something that perfectly sums up your personality. Wow. Thanks, guys. Harsh, but fair. Here to present the music category. You know her from Bridgerton, but I know her from Postman Pat. It's the incredible Sandra Tellis. Music, as we all know, has the ability to transform our emotions, elevate our senses, even keep us focused on our journey, and represent the true us, as Frankie has just shown. The nominees for Best Music are...
And the BAFTA goes to God of War. God of War. Yeah. I've got it. Bear and the team. Bear McQuarrie is a yeah. wizard. Yeah, absolute wizard. He's a wizard. It's absolutely spectacular. The way some of the action set pieces were like naturally timed to your actions. I was like, is he? Is he is conducting this to me? I'm sorry. Is there someone is here it? just like mixing uh, the music? Yeah. Uh, incredible. And that's incredibly hard to do. <laughs> incredibly hard to do. <laughs> Well, um, so unfortunately, our US colleagues uh, can't be here this evening, so it's our honor to pick up the award and say a few words uh, on their behalf. So I hope you don't mind the phone. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank and congratulate our wonderfully talented composer, Bear McCreary. Woo! Give it up. Thank you, um, thank you, Bear, for being so collaborative and so passionate about the project, and thank you so much for composing a truly remarkable score. So yeah, this goes out to Bear. Uh, thank you to our score producers, Keith Leary and Pete Scaturo, and to the entire global Sony PlayStation music team uh, for their skill, hard work, and dedication to produce a score of this quality. Thank you to game director Eric Williams and everybody at Santa Monica Studios. <laughs> Big up. Yeah, thank you for inviting us along on this amazing journey with you and creating special memories like this one tonight. Thank you to Hosier and Ivor and all the amazing musicians and singers in London, Los Angeles, Nashville, Iceland, and Norway who performed so beautifully on the score. And finally, for the, for the video game industry to have the support and recognition of such a prestigious academy um, is just amazing. So thank you, BAFTA. As we gather here tonight to celebrate the best and brightest in the world of gaming, it's also right that we take a moment to remember those who have left us this year. We have lost some truly talented individuals who have made a significant impact on the games industry. People like the musician Ryan Carraza, whose incredible music is used in tonight's memorial. Let us all pay tribute to those who have passed and may their legacies burn as brightly as they did.
their legacies will live on. A huge thank you to Ruthless for her performance of Don't Be So Serious by Low Roar. Next up, it's Game of the Year, the only award voted for by the public. As an eSports fanatic, no pun intended, I am delighted to announce that presenting the award, we have the members of the XL eSports Valorant Game Changers team. It's Nelly, Catalina, Puri, Samzi, Luzia and Jupi. Hello everyone. Okay, so there are many things that set our industry apart from other creative ones. The global phenomenon that is in gaming and esports, an unwavering eagerness to play and grind new titles, and the way we constantly challenge ourselves to be better. But most of all, what sets us apart from other, community, from other industries is the community. And that's why we're thrilled to be announcing this award, the only one that's voted by the community. You guys. <laughs> this award celebrates the games that entertained and delighted players from all around the world. And the nominees for EE Game of the Year are... I don't know if I can find a way forward. All by yourself? No way. The EE Game of the Year goes to God of War. Would you look at that? Voted for by the people. God of War does it again. The public have spoken. They've spoken and they said Kratos is the one. He's definitely yeah. the one. Well, and the trailer as well. I mean, he there's such a stellar category of you know, all the titles there, but, every single one. Well, there you go. It goes good. to show how much this game affected everyone. I all mean, the players. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, yeah. I want a BAFTA. Oh my goodness. Uh, this uh, award is really special to us because uh, without the audience, without all of you out there playing our games, and I've I think I, I can speak for the entire room here. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do this without all of you. So thank you so much to, to all the fans that really keep us employed. <laughs> and I, I really, really, really appreciate uh, BAFTAs for um, honoring us with this. And the audience, thank you for voting for us. Um, I, I think everyone in the team and uh, Santa Monica Studios, uh, we're very grateful for your support. And I really want to thank the team for working so hard uh, especially with the conditions that we have to go through to get this game done. Uh, you know, I want to thank IT and I want to thank facilities who actually got us through the pandemic, uh, our managers who, who kept us sane throughout the whole thing. And in the end, um, I think it's really uh, special to be able to be up here to, 
you know, receive this award. I, I really want to thank our game director, Eric Williams. Without his vision and his guidance, we wouldn't have been able to, to make this game. And, um, and again, everyone that contributed, our, our external partners that helped us to accomplish this game, we really appreciate all your help. And again, thank you to the audience. Thank you for all your support, all the fans that really got us to where we are. And um, again, Eric, this one's for you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs>
Games is no longer about that tired cliche of teenagers sat in their bedrooms. I mean, they are still there, but these days there are games to suit all ages. Making a family game is a unique skill, and one that requires an incredible level of talent and excellence. To present the award, please welcome two streamers who love Minecraft so much that if you cut them, they bleed blocks. It's Captain Puffy and Tubbo. Playing games is for the whole family. The nosy cousins. The younger siblings. And the aunt that just keeps talking about whatever the Atari is. <laughs> the titles in this category have all excelled at producing games perfect for the entire family to enjoy. The nominees for family are... And the BAFTA goes to Kirby and the Forgotten Land. At Nintendo there, Kirby. <laughs> oh, probably the most colourful dystopian world I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, and also just everyone's love for snacking. Yeah, oi. What other game can you think of? Car? Come on, <laughs> name it. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Nelson Calvino, marketing director at Nintendo UK. Very honored to be receiving these awards on behalf of Nintendo and Al Laboratory. Um, this is the first game uh, that is fully 3D in the 30 uh, years of the Kirby series. And Nintendo and Al Laboratory are very happy to see kids and parents enjoy this game together. And especially, yes, when uh, uh, we swallow a whole car. So thank you, BAFTA, for this honor. Appreciate it. Thank you. Watching a brand new creative team debut a title is so exciting to watch. All of the nominees in this next category have brought incredible new ideas to our attention and proved that the future of this industry isn't just in safe hands, it's in remarkable ones. And to present it a game changer in the streaming world herself, it's Leah. This is surreal. <laughs> the next award celebrates the new kids on the block, those games that smashed their way into the industry and whose fresh approaches left us all wanting more. These are the kind of titles that have shaken the gaming scene up in the best way possible. The nominees for debut game are...
we're good. And the BAFTA goes to... Tunic. And that win again for Tunic there. Yeah, See the that. little fades coming through. It's a, it's a good, it's a good debut. It's a really, really good game. And that, that's a tough category. I know. That's a really, really tough category. There are some incredibly strong games there. Mm. It literally could have gone to any. It could have gone to any. Any of them. I could have. I could have done. No. I'm, yeah. I'm glad I didn't have to. Well, you know, you're still playing it. I haven't quite finished it yet. <laughs> I'm hoping to do that whole bunch of taking their tallies as well. Yeah. What do you think? Um, thank you. We can make him kiss. <laughs> uh, gosh, thank you. Um, I, I don't have anything more to say. Uh, does anybody have? I mean, thank you to to Finji and the entire team and everyone who's who's not here and, and, and Felix and our friends and our families. And <laughs> uh, I was audio director and uh, some. <laughs> that's my wife. I love you too, Zoe. Thank you. Uh, we did a lot of strange and unprecedented stuff with the sound in this game, and I just want to thank Andrew over here for being so trusting, because when you approach a lead on a project and say, hey, let's hide a significant portion of the work we're doing and never acknowledge it ever. Like, what kind of AAA studio boardroom meeting, how'd that go? It's like, it's not going to happen, right? But this guy's like, yeah, let's do it, sure, no problem. And these composers as well also said the same thing. How does this happen? I'm so thankful for these collaborators. So thank you so much. Thank you, BAFTA. Thank you, everyone. This is, this is nuts. Thank you so much. And now we move on to the highly prestigious Fellowship Award. The fellowship is the highest accolade the Academy can bestow and is awarded to someone with an outstanding contribution to games. To present this year's fellowship, please welcome Siobhan Reddy and Tara Saunders. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Um, tonight, we are proud to be honouring Shuhei Yoshida with the BAFTA Fellowship Award. I know personally how much this award means, and I can think of no one more deserving than Shu. So what can we say about Shuhei Yoshida, a name that is synonymous with the gaming industry? For many in the room, including me and Siobhan, he has been an ever-present industry icon throughout our careers. Ever since his instrumental involvement in the creation of the original PlayStation, Shuhei has been at the heart of PlayStation, launching new hardware platforms and championing the games that we make for these. He has guided and influenced so many teams at PlayStation Studios over the years. Oh gosh, the auto cue's gone. <laughs> it's back. <laughs> it's back. Um, Shuhei's love of the bold and quirky, uh, many which have been awarded here at BAFTA, was perhaps a bit daring for a senior executive, but this just made every developer who got to know him love him more. To know Shu is to know someone who just truly and authentically loves games and the people who make them, whether, that being the first person in, whether that's being the first person in the room to pick up a controller to try a new prototype, encouraging someone's career behind the scenes, or spending two hours talking with a consumer at a games conference about something really nerdy. What sets Shu apart is his humility, his kindness, and his genuine love of the gaming community. Thank you for everything you have done and for everything you will continue to do. Let's take a look at some of what Shu's colleagues have to say about his incredible career. From the beginning of the PlayStation business, Shuei Yoshida has brought a passion for games and a sense of curiosity in what drew to his work. He was the first non-technical hire at PlayStation and has been advocating for the importance of creativity and diversity of content ever since. As the business got bigger, 
and he rose within the organization. Uh, he did not change his philosophy, giving the teams time and space and the freedom to make mistakes and to grow. He's an executive who has earned his place by being in the trenches, by making some of the greatest PlayStation franchises and IPs and games that the platform has ever known. He's a tastemaker, and he's always finding interesting new content from all corners of the world. Shu has encouraged a generation of developers to create new experiences for the world to enjoy. Through the console hardwares, but also in some of the most innovative areas around 3D, AR, and VR gaming, it's really great to see you now spotlight indie talent too. Shuhei's advice to developers has always been candid and on point. It's all about what's fun and what the player needs. And it inspires us to rise to challenges of making great games. His curiosity and insight fosters a space for game makers and hardware creators to come together to bring something new and innovative for players. It was Shu's support on risk-taking concepts that became Flower, Journey, The Unfinished Swan, Edith Finch, and many more. So thanks, Shu, for helping to broaden people's perspective on what games can be. When we were showing Pyre at our very first PSX, uh, it was a you know, strange wizard basketball game, but there you were playing the demo of our game, headphones on, and fully absorbed. You do pay that kind of attention to independent developers and, and celebrate uh, creative, interesting new ideas. He's always had uh, an appreciation for the weird and the wonderful and has done a great job of looking out for the little guy in the games industry for, for many years now. He championed four guys right from the start and uh, went above and beyond in, in what we'd ever asked him to do. Shuhei, you're, you're such a rock star. Shu is a part of the gaming culture fabric which makes working and being in the games industry so awesome. Shuhei Yoshida is a real gamer, a champion of games, with an incredible passion for finding the fun. He loves this industry. He makes this industry better. Shu's <laughs> contribute. Oops. Shu's contribution to the world of gaming has been immeasurable. He has helped to shape the industry in ways that few others have, and his legacy will continue to inspire and influence future generations of game developers. But perhaps even more importantly, he has helped bring joy, entertainment, and excitement to millions of people around the world. And for that, we are eternally grateful. So it is our great pleasure to present the BAFTA Fellowship Award to Shuhei Yoshida. Shu, congratulations on this world of Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and uh, it's an incredible honor and uh, super humbling uh, to receive this award. When I look back on my career, I always thought I'm one of the luckiest ones in the industry. I joined Ken Kutaragi's team when they are developing the original PlayStation. And when I got the producer job, the first two projects I was given <laughs> were Crash Bandicoot and Gran Turismo. <laughs> How lucky I was. And those super talented creators like Mark Sani, Nori Dog, Kazunori Yamauchi, they are not just great developers. They demand the super, super best from everyone who touches their project. So I learned a lot 
you know, being able to help them make their games. And my fortune continue to be able to work with teams like Insomniac, Sucker Punch, and Santa Monica Studios. Congrats on today's wins. And Guerrilla Games, congrats again. And Media Molecule, of course. And London Studio, it was super fun to work on VR project with you. And super talented, amazing game creators like Fumito Ueda-san and Miyazaki-san, omedetou gozaimasu, and Genova Chen. And of course, the young indie developers for the last few years. I had so much fun working with you, and I hope I have been able to contribute something for your project. And talking about fun, the video game industry will never stop being a fun place for every one of us. Because video game as a medium takes every advancement of technology and turns it into a tool for developers to use to create amazing new experiences. Whether it's graphics or network or devices, sensors, VR, AR, and of course for the future advancement, advancement of AI technology, we create amazingly, hugely powerful tools, put that into the hands of developers. So indie developers dream on because your next game could change the face of the industry forever and I cannot wait to play it. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, BAFTA, and thanks my family, my wife, and my daughters. You are the reason that I can keep going. Thank you. Award Game Beyond Entertainment honours those titles that have elevated and evolved our medium. These games invite us into their worlds, changing the way we see the real world around us once we reach the credits. Here to present the award is one of the funniest comedians and writers working today. It's the fantabulous Sophie Duker. Hello, fellow nerds. <laughs> we have all experienced the joy of playing games, the rush of winning, the thrill of completing a level, and the high of finally making it past a tricky puzzle. But there are certain games that stay with us far beyond us putting that controller down. Those games that provoke political thought, expand our knowledge, and sometimes even help to enact social change. The nominees for Game Beyond Entertainment are... The votes are in, and it's a decisive win for the Vax. What a day! They said we couldn't do it! But what does the world that mean for us?
and the BAFTA goes to Endling Extinction is Forever! Oh, well done, Endling Extinction Forever! Well done for Game beautiful Beyond game. Entertainment, I know. Beautiful, beautiful game. Such important themes as well. Oh, all of these games are such important themes, but well done. Yeah, we're just saying it's an incredibly tough category list, definitely. Ooh. Well, um, thank you very much Please. for this <laughs> amazing award. Uh, five years ago, we created here with the studios with the idea of developing a game where we could talk about things that were worrying us, uh, things uh, that were of social impact issues. Um, and we created Endling, Extinction is Forever. That's the hard work of the last five years. Um, this, this award is so great because it validates the idea we had by that time uh, that video games are a powerful tool to uh, talk about important topics and to let the people reflect about the experience they, they, they have gone through in, in the video games. So thank you very much. Thanks to the BAFTA, uh, the British Academy, thanks to our families. Thanks to the developers of Hero Video Studios. I know they are watching from Spain. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We're nearly there, guys. Next up, performer in a lead role. And before we move on, if I may, I'd like to say a hello to all the supportive families watching and supporting their loved ones tonight. For the first time, this includes my mother, who has decided to tune in not because I'm hosting, but because her friend's granddaughter is nominated. <laughs> Hi, Mum. <laughs> to present this award, please welcome star of the Hitman Games and Returnal, for which she won this very award last year, the wonderful Jane Perry. <laughs> Games are held together by a strong lead, a protagonist that you care about and that you root for. It is impossible to understate how important an iconic lead role is in the history of games. The talented performers in this category have that rare ability to bottle lightning and serve it up to us in the form of incredibly powerful performances. The nominees for performer in a leading role are... Uh, something jumped out right in front of the car and we didn't want to hit it, so we swerved and... and here we are. Something jumped out? Uh, I'm sorry, it was, it was so dark and it happened so fast and they were gone. Then why? Why? That is what you want to tell me. I've tried to walk this path with you. We follow you everywhere. But you don't believe in any of it. And still, I follow. How would it feel when his sister is... I made angry? a mistake, right? I don't know what's happening to me, Lucas. I, I feel my mind going. Sergeant McDowish, welcome to the City of Souls. There are few here to uphold the law, and many of those who resist corruption disappear. And the BAFTA goes to Christopher Judge. Whoa, he's done it! Yes. Christopher Judge for God of War Ragnarok. 
God of War is absolutely unstoppable yeah. this year. Wait, what, what's the tally up to? Is that five? Oh, I'm five. Who knows? I stopped counting up for a while. Listen, Amazing. well done to Christopher Dante. He made me feel empathy for God. How about that? I know. <laughs> so many, honestly, so many emotions in that whole game. I think it took everyone on a... Yeah. Everyone suddenly had to, like, we all pull, up, on that pull, up, pull up our pops. I'm not even a fun, but I felt like a fun. <laughs> that's, how, that's how he made me feel. Well done to Christopher. Thank you, um, BAFTAs, thank you for 20 years of supporting the gaming industry. <clears throat> uh, my fellow nominees, it's been great getting to know you, like getting to actually know someone that you are, feel so fortunate to be in the same category as. And Sonny's so fortunate to live with you for eight years. Um, I'd like to thank Sony, PlayStation, and my beloved Sony Santa Monica. Um, it all starts with Yumi Yang, my leader. I'd like to thank Corey for hiring me to play this fella. Um, Eric, what a joy. What a joy. What a talent. What a human being. Matt, Rich, and your team, thank you for these words. Bruno, you know we started off rough, bruh. <laughs> but you were always right. You were always right. Thank you. To my fellow actors, this is ours. Ours. I am so honored to not only call you family, but to call you friends. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you've given in that volume. This is not possible without you. I'd like to thank my queen, my mother, who allowed me to dream, gave me a safe place to dream and allowed me to believe that anything I wanted to do or be was possible. I thank my brother, Dr. Jeffrey Judge. I love you. I'd like to thank my children. I am not the first Christopher Judge to win a BAFTA. My oldest son actually won, won Best Actor in a Short Film a few years back. So now you can quit shit talking. Um, <laughs> my children will always be my greatest accomplishment. I would love to thank my wife. Good Lord, everyone here knows the ups and downs of our business. And she has not only been with me every step of the way, she somehow manages to do it with grace and dignity when sometimes I don't have it myself. And after my three-day quarantine, I'm going to show you how much I appreciate you. <laughs> It is not lost on me that I'm a black man standing on a British stage accepting an award for playing a Spartan warrior, a Spartan god killer who in his heart only wants to be a father. It's the role of a lifetime. I don't know if I'll ever have this again but I'm going to live and breathe every moment of this great gift that I was given. And I will do it humbly and thankfully. Thank you to the fans. Be easier on each other. You have more in common 
than what separates you. No matter what platform you love, no matter what game you love, you're still part of the gaming community. And give each other a break. As we are no longer a secret, and we know this is, and this being gaming, is the preeminent medium for storytelling. To all you beautiful, wonderful, talented people in this room, continue to be bold, continue to be audacious, continue to be great. I am so humbled to be in your presence. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We're here, guys. We made it. The final award. Best game, AKA the final boss battle. I hope you stocked up on health potions. I won't lie, from the sounds of it, some of you have had one too many. The nominees for best game are truly exceptional. They've seen us take down gods, demigods, and skeleton armies, compete with our mates' marvelous card collections, save a city of sentient robots, and made us read the instruction manual for the first time in years. To present the award for best game, please welcome a woman so wonderful, I named my own child after her. She is the face of Eurogamer, the multi-talented walking encyclopedia of games. It's Ilfifa Wilson. <laughs> Well, as a proud gamer, it is an unbelievable honor to be able to present the BAFTA Award for Best Game. The world of games produces an incredible variety of diversity, and that has always, always been its greatest strength. And I'm sure I speak for everyone in this room when I say it has been a joy to experience some of the unbelievable games that all of you have created this year. The following games have all been breathtaking in their own originality, their boldness, and their desire to create an experience that none of us have ever seen before. The nominees for best game are... Death can have me when it burns me. Bind you if you let it. And the BAFTA for best game goes to Vampire Survivors. Oh, what? Yes. Vampire Survivors does it. Look at that. that Big win. Incredible win. 
game that literally came out of nowhere, yeah. took everywhere by yeah. storm. That's beautiful. That is a beautiful Congratulations moment. Congratulations to Ponko there and Luca. Whoa. Yeah. Best game. Best game. I, I couldn't have called it. I couldn't have called it. The that end category end was so, like, stock to the gills. <laughs> stock to the gills. We did not expect this. <laughs> uh, so, you'll see we're not Luca, um, but we are the entire development team of Vampire Survivors. Um, so, firstly, we'd like to thank the rest of the uh, team, everyone here, uh, for the hard work on the, uh, the game. So, QA, engineers, marketing, programmers, everyone. Um, and also people that couldn't make it, so people that wrote our soundtrack, like Daniele. Um, everyone's had a huge impact on Vampire Survivors, and the team works so hard uh, on the game that clearly everyone loves to play, even Sp Phil Spencer. Um, <laughs> secondly, I'd love to thank the community, our fans, um, and the players all around the world uh, on every format that they play on. Uh, everything from the itch.io release all the way up to mobile release, your kind comments, mentions, feedback, and everything else have been invaluable to us. And we appreciate, appreciate all of it. Uh, one extra thing, I'd like to give a massive thank you, and the rest of the team would as well, to Luca for bringing us on this wild ride with him. Uh, it's insane. Um, and thank you again to BAFTA as well uh, for this prestigious award. It's an honor to receive it tonight and be a part of this ceremony. And congratulations to all of the development teams here today who are nominated for awards as well. Thank you. And with that, we come to the end of the BAFTA Games Awards in 2023. What an evening it's been. Like a game of Fortnite, there's been highs, lows, and I spent most of the time on the edge of my heels. Congratulations to all of tonight's well-deserved winners and our fantastic nominees, and thanks again for the support of our, all of our partners. I know I speak for the entire games community when I say we can't wait to see what you've got in store for us next. So, for those watching at home, the night isn't over. Sit tight and strap in. We are heading over to our post-show party studio, where Nell Tomlinson and Julia Hardy will be chatting to some winners and guests and playing through some of tonight's BAFTA-nominated games. I might even stop by and say hello. It has been an absolute pleasure to be your host this evening. Good night.
Wow. All right. Wow. All right. That was a bit good. Oh, a bit good. That was incredible, I think, is the word you're trying to look for there. All right. Magnificent. Don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> but, yeah, that was amazing. It is. What a night. And, uh, let me tell you what. Were your predictions home at home at right as well, yeah? I mean... Yeah. Did you get it right? Actually? Let us know in the chat, please. Yeah. No, I totally wasn't. That was, that was really, really oh, great. That was so it was good. Such a, it was such a difficult year for all the juries. Yeah, I just I, don't, think, don't think anyone can really put it into words how tough every single one of those juries would have been. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't have called any of those. I couldn't have called... We were trying. To, yeah. Yes. We were, do, we we were, taking, were, we were taking some notes. Second, we weren't oh. always right, you know. No, well, I don't think I was right on any of them. Oh, well. But can See, we it's talk your first about, time doing it. It's fine. It's true. <laughs> can we talk about <laughs> vampire survivors taking best. best game? They look shook up. They did. I don't think... They were like, huh? Well, also as well, you think about like, you know, God of War was kind of like just snatch, snatch, snatch yeah. snatching all these awards. And I think, you know, maybe towards the end, you'd be like, well, you know, probably be God of it War, did. right? It's it very it popular. Took seems to be very six popular. awards. Yeah. And so, I, I, I guess, yeah. Yeah. And also like, especially, I don't know, I think people still have that thing in their head where it's like when it feels like a smaller title, when it's yes. going up against something bigger. Like, I think no one can really get that kind of, you know, David and Goliath sensibility That's out of their head where That's it's true. like these guys are really big look at christopher judge mm -hmm. and then you know but you just gotta make a good game you yeah. have a great idea that's all that matters that's exa exactly that well speaking of making a good game best british game going to roll it down there yes is that the first time we've had it oi, oi, in a in a award ceremony you reckon i don't know i mean i've certainly done that at the after party <laughs> but i don't think that counts <laughs> Technically, it's on the same day, right? It's the same day. It's the same it's day. It's just no one was filming me. Thank no, goodness. but that was incredible. I was super happy for <laughs> Roll7 there. They had two uh, uh, games nominated yeah. in that category, and they managed to take it. They rolled it on. Fantastic game as well. I love playing it. Really good. Um, I did fully enjoy the Troy Baker, Bella Ramsey little oh, chit-chat. yes. Hilarious. Bit of a dig about Troy's hair, but all right. Yeah. Well, well, to be fair, I mean, it's not a touch on I mine, mean, you can't know? come anywhere near Pedro Pascal right now. It's yeah. just he has, like, an entire orbit of, like... Listen, obsession around listen, him. He's a silver Sparkly fox now. Sparkly obsession. Silver fox now. Yeah. I, don't want, I don't want to see him with his hair gone back to black. No, <laughs> doesn't, that doesn't need to happen at all. No, no, no. no, no. But that was cute, though. I like it when that stuff was like lovely, that comes unexpected together. as well. It was really, and that was yeah. That was Good super to see funny. Troy Baker here as well. Yeah, I, I don't think I've seen. I think I've seen Troy. Well, I know I've seen him. Maybe yeah. He's he's around. I mean, look at look. I mean, the Last of Us Part One just came out on PC. <laughs> yeah. There you go. He's about. Yeah. He's about. He's about. He's about. He's about. Um, Honestly, there was so obviously um, Shuhei's speech was amazing. Ashida, <sighs> listen, fellowship. Do, can they can they actually get the fellows together? I feel like this is just a, a movie that needs to happen. It was lovely that Siobhan gave out the award as well. Yeah, I thought that was that was very nice. But Shuhei, you know what? Out of all the people in gaming, yeah. he's the person I want to see his game collection. Because he's seen I would, games I from would the rif birth. I would rifle through every drawer in that house. Listen, I would raided look, house. You know, like all the way back to original PlayStation. Yeah. Like, like, oh, I just got put on like, oh, you know, oh, all Gran right. Turismo. Whoops. So we raided his house then? Is that, we, <laughs> is that where we're going? <laughs> all right. Shuhei, we're coming round. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he's the sort of person who'd be like, please come. Have a nice time. That's true. He is. He's very, he's he's very, very guy. sweet. Yeah. We're going to be talking to him later, right? We are. I mean, of course, we have to. He is uh, the fellow. Fellow. The fellow. That's the, that's, <laughs> I think that's me, what we call him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a huge award and yeah. well deserved as well. A legend in the entertainment industry. Absolutely. I mean, to be honest, like we could just sit here and kind of like riff and talk about the whole ceremony. But you were just there. Oh, you just saw it. So course. we don't need to go too much back into it again. But I feel like we should uh, be getting some guests on pretty soon. And uh, later on, we're going to be joined by Christopher Judge and uh, Sunny Suljic, as well as the BAFTA fellow, as we said, Shuhei Yoshida. Indeed. And uh, actually, we interviewed the legend himself a couple of weeks back All and right. asked him the age-old question basically we were like we really need to just end this conversation because it's been going on for too long gamers okay do you invert your controllers yes or no and we want to know your answers at home because i really do feel like we should just need to stop talking about this now <laughs> and get to the end of it because we spend way too much time chatting about it and then we can all obviously tell there's, a, there's, there's, later. there's only one correct answer for this i there's don't think we should answer. say this right now come anyway. on anyway get but voting. I, <laughs> I think also as well, you need to go off and play some um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles That's with a right. certain Sophie Duca in a second. Indeed, Shredder's Revenge. You know what? I'm going to do that right now. I think you should. I'm going to boot it up. Go on, go yeah, on. Yeah, you need to set it up. you got a save. Ready, ready to go, yeah? Listen, listen. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm, ready, I'm ready to Wait, take out some footprint. Right. I'm, I'm going right now. Okay. I'll see you later. Yeah, then. yeah. I bet he hasn't got it set up. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
So anyway, we promised you star-studded interviews and right now we're going to deliver. So fresh from their incredible BAFTA win, we have the stars of Immortality. And if you haven't played it yet, no spoilers, but, you know, it's... It's a bit unique and really, I feel like we would need the whole post show for me to really just go into all my like thoughts and feelings like about this game uh, and really explain it properly. But essentially, it's amazing and I'm obsessed. So here's a little quick reminder of the exquisite immortality. Would you like to come in? Come inside. You're going to come in. It's hard to say no. <laughs> well, hello. You, did, you just got it in time to sit down there. This dress has so a whole orbit oh, of yeah. its own. It's amazing. I wasn't going to make it almost, but... Yeah, it did here. just about. Please <laughs> welcome Holota Mullen and Man Engage from Immortality. Thank welcome. You. Round of applause. Come on, guys. <laughs> got some talent sitting down on the sofa. Um, Obviously, you can see there's a lot of love for Immortality, Best Narrative, which, I mean, come on, you are the creators of this, you know? I mean, there are words on a page, but what are they without you? <laughs> we have Sam Barlow's words <laughs> and yes, words of the right. Well, you know, you did, Sam did some of it, right? But it's down to you guys. Um, basically, we basically did the whole we thing. Basically we basically wrote it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I thought as much. <laughs> it was all improv. Much. Yeah, <laughs> good yeah. All improv. <laughs> <laughs> um, how's it been being at the BAFTA Games Awards? Have you enjoyed Lovely. it, Sibley? Yes, yeah, it was nerve-wracking, but everybody's so nice. Nerve-wracking? We're just having yes. a chat. It's all right. I mean, no, I'm not ner not right now, <laughs> but it was. And then I met you, and everybody else has been so <laughs> wonderful. That's because we really like the game. I don't know if you've got that. Like, Otherwise, we really like horrible it. horrible to people when yes. you don't like the game. Um, yeah, we're like, I'm not going to talk. No, we just turn our backs on them. No, we don't. It's very, it's very friendly here. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess what I, I've got a few little questions that I would love to ask you, uh, and I changed all of their questions. I was like, these are my questions. Um, I wanted to ask you, man, like, out, of all the, um, out of all the films that you made for the, for the game, which was your favourite one? Which one was it? I get this question a lot, and uh, uh, I, it's so hard to choose, but I would have to say Minsky, because it's just so fun to be in a 70s erotic <laughs> crime thriller <laughs> and get to play a femme fatale and, like, pay homage to, you know, Sharon Stone and all the great femme fatales. And, um, yeah, shooting Minsky was, I think the most fun and I think it's the it's the movie I would most like to see start to finish if it were ever put together if they ever find all the footage do that well true. I don't know if I found it all it's still some out there I definitely know I haven't looked at enough teacups yet mm. um, <laughs> <laughs> um Harlott, you actually said in like some other interviews you you really enjoyed playing the one because it sort of gave you that kind of freedom to just I don't know like really just be this like bigger than yourself kind of like character with this this concept do you find that you've brought any of that back into your life because obviously you know as an actor you have to kind of get into that and get into the role and whatever have you brought some of that back into your into your life just a little bit I'm, I'm working on it yeah um, I, I think we have a thing, I'm Swedish, and uh, we actually have a, a saying, it's kind of like a law, that never be the tallest flower. So I grew up with, oh. you know, I, I know I, I won that competition, but just, I really did, didn't do really well and all that. So that's kind of my mentality. And um, No, please be the tallest flower. We like it. I would love to be the tallest flower, and I'm working on it. You I'm are like, the tallest flower. I'm, I'm eating seeds and whatever it is you're supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I would love to incorporate that. And it was, um, it was amazing to find that within you, doing the part, that all that strength was in there, and to portray it and go, you know what? Actually, I can do that in life. I can, I can be the tallest flower. I, I can, can do, do the I can flower. do it. Maybe some flower. I'm going to do it, yeah. yeah. I'm going to take all the sun. On and steroids. Make mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, one of my favourite bits, obviously, like within the game, well, I say favourite, it was sort of terrifying. We actually talked about this. Yes, we did. It was the very kind of close-up where you kind of stared into camera. And I feel like, I don't want people to be, the game to be spoiled, but maybe you could just, down this camera here, just give a little taste of that so that people just get that little flavour of just seeing it. Do you think you do it? Yeah, yeah. Go on. This, this is your one. She can I, I want to see a it. Dime. Yes. Oh. I'm a, come on, guys. Oh my God. Okay. Wow. Yeah, That's you're right. She can totally amazing <laughs> to witness. I, every time Did I get it chills. Good? Was it great? Was it it great? looked I'm amazing. That was intense. I'm like a bit shooketh. Not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, so, Amanda, and also you've, um, you've started going behind the camera now, a little bit. You know, you've got the real life girl, which is um, the thing. How was it kind of switching those roles? Do you have a bit of sympathy for Sam now, now that you're kind of a bit more on the other <laughs> side? Definitely. <laughs> I, I, I have empathy for Sam. Actors. Just like, it, you know, with all the moving parts and working with a very low budget and being like, what you know, watching the numbers go down, 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 <laughs> and then into the red. And, you know, um, so yes, definitely. But yes, it's it's been incredible to sort of um, to delve into something um, from the other side of it as well. I I wrote and executive produced Real Life Girl, and I star in it. Um, and we we just found out we've gotten into our first festival. Boom. Um, yes. Los Angeles. Love and it. We, Love to we're hear still it. raising. Money. I'm gonna plug this. We're still <laughs> raising money um, uh, um, to to recoup the costs from post production. Um, but yes, it's a it's a psychological thriller drama series you do like that. about we love those uh, <laughs> and OnlyFans cam girl who <laughs> accidentally meets the wife of her most twisted viewer. Okay, I'm into it. Fully into it. Very bad things Let's happen. Let's make a game out of it. You just speak to Sam. Just that. cut it up. Put in some cups you can look at. And it's Seriously, fine. Yeah, there you go. Come some on, done. You could, win, you could win a BAFTA <laughs> for best narrative. Done. Job's good. And, um, I like how you're thinking. Yeah, always. It's all right. We'll discuss it later. Um, I want you guys to go off to the party and have a lovely time and enjoy yourself, as you should, after, you know, winning. Winning awards, yes, make it happen. I'm um, so glad Immortality won. Yes. It was so it was, lovely seeing Natalie amazing. and Sam up there, and I was just like, I can't cry. I don't have waterproof mascara no. on. Yeah. <laughs> no. I was like, does anyone have a tissue? Like <laughs> well, look, thank you so so much. Go enjoy the party, and thank yes, you. a big big thank you to Halotta and Manon. So, right, we are going to go across now to Inel, who I believe is about to kind of delve into the sewer system of New York looking for pizza, which wouldn't be the first time, which can mean basically one of two things. I mean, he's either playing Shredder's Revenge or his night has taken a bit of a weird turn. But to be honest with you, we've definitely all been there. You've eaten pizza off the floor, right, I know? Uh, yeah, I can confirm I'm uh, knee deep in half shells at the minute, Julia. Yep, I'm with Sophie Juca right now. And we are playing double BAFTA nominated Teenage Mutant Ninja yeah. Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Come on, this is a big whoa, game. Whoa, oh. Absolutely amazing multiplayer title. You can play up to six players, Sophie. Oh my God, all we need is you and me. Okay, yeah, that's all we that's what I'm talking about. Me, that's what I'm talking about. Now, Sophie, let me let you know right now. I'm a, I used to be, but well, still am, mm -hmm. big. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, back from when it was Teenage Hero Turtles, yeah? Okay. But, what about, I want to know about you. What's your history with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? I'm going to start with, who's your favourite? Do you have a favourite? Uh, it's Michelangelo. Okay, I Obviously, see. I'm playing as Mikey, I'm okay. having a great time. Um, I played a lot with my cousins. All oh, right. Uh, who were all, all older boys, so I'm doing the tactic. Okay. That I employed at that time, which is very much to button mash. Hey, listen, it works staying, in this game. Staying as long as possible. It works in this game. I love a masher game. Well, Michelangelo, he's the party dude, as yeah. the tune goes. You know what I'm saying? Well, and, and I guess this game harkens back to the old, the, uh, the, the old school. No I guess cartoon series and the arcade games. Do you do you manage to play any play any of those back in the back in the day? Um, I went down like what like down Hollywood Bowl. And you that. know it. Yeah, like House of the Dead. Yes. <laughs> 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 I thought that age would bring wisdom, but it really does not. No, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, House of the Dead was my big, my big, uh, my big hill to climb, and I'm not sure I ever will climb it. <laughs> well, who knows? Maybe they might uh, bring that back as well. We shall see. Wow. So we are currently playing through on the first level, but this is this is quite a quite a big game. Uh, also filled with cross-play compatibility as well, so you can play with any of your friends as well. Double nominated as well. But one thing I want to ask you, right, is you, we both met on the stand-up comedy circuit. Yes. How has that been for you? Whoa, comedy. Mm. I mean, it, I mean, it's a hell of a you're game. doing really well at the minute. Oh, thank you so much. Come on, I've been seeing your career. I mean, I feel like there are a lot of big bosses in comedy. Yeah, really. There's <laughs> like, a lot of big bosses in comedy. At first, like, level one, you think it's just this, like, creepy promoter, mm. and then you're like, oh, no, <laughs> it's like the Apollo. Oh. And then there's something else. There's, like, so many... I think there are so many side quests you can do in comedy. There is. So I feel like it's been exhilarating. Mm. Sometimes I wish I could turn the controller off and have a little nap, but it's really <laughs> been really really fun i hear that i hear that so do you do you unwind with video games after you finish a long gig you know when you you're journeying back you've 
just done a little stint in Bournemouth. And you, you like, you get home. He's like, you know what? Oh. Am I gonna put on the console or you just now nah, going straight to sleep? The post Bournemouth console. I feel yeah. like I've fallen asleep. I like playing a lot of stuff on Steam now, like so just on my laptop. Oh, nice. Uh, but the games that I choose to play at this point in time are always kind of weird indie ones. So I was playing Papers Please. Papers Please, fantastic title. Really? Yeah. Really? Uh, by Lucas Pop, that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I know. That. I mean, that's, that's why you're in this chair. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I feel I also played one which I feel like you might not have heard of. What was that one? <laughs> Avian Attorney. Oh, I don't. Tell me about that. Oh, uh, basically, you, you play as a bird. Um, you're a lawyer and you're a bird. It's set in revolutionary France. It's really good. Okay, yeah, that so does I, sound cool. It is, it is very cool. I think I like playing weirder games now, but I still... I mean, you're really doing the heavy lifting here. Oh, I don't know about that. I just died. And uh, there's some piece oh. at the top, but, but you know what? You know, I'll do the cardinal thing. I'm going to pause it. Yeah. Whoa, I okay, I've got, got some pieces. I got because what hey! you, you, can't, you can't play my play games like pizza, right? You're Come a on. legend. You're a genius. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> That's how you do have a proper like multiplayer session, right? Do you have friends come round and play games? Any friends. <laughs> you got me, you got me, Sophie. Don't I don't have any friends. I would love to. I feel like the only game that I feel like a lot of my friends play is like Mario. Mario Kart. That's the classic multiplayer. Yeah, that That's is. That's the classic. Come home. You can't go wrong. For a night out. But I think there's so many other opportunities, and I really, I'm a big fan of 90s revival, so I really feel like these turtles are a bit of me. It, it, Come on, I, Mikey! I, I feel like I'm like eight years old again. That's what it is. Now, we're asking everybody today, but Sophie, are you inverted or not with your controller? What, the one where you turn it upside down? Yeah, yeah. Is up, up or is down, up? OK, no, what's, no. What's, it, what's for you? It's, it's up, up. Up, up? Yeah, up? I'm, I'm sorry to be up? heteronormative with my controller, but... You are? <laughs> up, up, yeah? Up, up. Is that up you? Up, is up. I mean... Fine. I, 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 don't, I don't even know if I can... Are you a, da are you a down up? I'm, I'm inverted, isn't it? So I don't oh, even... Can we, can we even play together? Is it compatible? I don't know. You know what? You know what? Let's chat to Julia. I'm going to throw back to Julia. We're going to continue with some turtles, <laughs> maybe some pizza. Julia, she, she don't like it inverted. <laughs> In any other context, that would sound super weird. Um, so thanks, Arnel. OK, so now continuing with the theme of games royalty, I'm excited to say we have a bit of a corker here. We've got God of War, Father and Son, Christopher Judge and Sonny Suljic. Welcome, guys. Welcome to our little after party. How are you doing? All right. How are you doing? Yeah, good. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. Yeah, good. <laughs> it's quite chill. Um, I think, I mean, obviously, congratulations. You guys actually smashed it. Six wins. It's pretty good. It's all right. Yeah. It's 40 noms. It's not too bad. Nice. How are you yeah. feeling? Feeling good? Come on. I'm feeling good. I, I mean, uh, just, you know, I, I think we're all in agreement that uh, the fan vote uh, for Game of the Year was was our win, especially uh, for Eric Williams. Um, yeah. uh, just he was such a great captain of the ship Definitely. and uh, through extraordinary circumstances being in lockdown and trying to yeah. arrange days and trying to schedule stuff and then trying to get days that were very script heavy and he just did it all just un unflappable unwavering was always positive always uh, in a great mood and uh i, I think we're just so happy <laughs> yeah uh, that it won uh the fan game of the year i think also as well what I'd, I'd love to know like obviously after the original you know uh, god of war came out and then obviously there's a little bit of time in between like when you what were you doing when you got the call about ragnarok where were you who did you tell were you excited when you got the call? I was actually, I'm pretty sure I was playing video games while I found out. <laughs> of course out. you were so on brand. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was really exciting news and I think I was like streaming on Twitch or something. So my mom was telling me the news and I was like, shh. So, uh, oh, like, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of a situation, but I mean, I ended the stream and I was just really excited. Um, but I mean, once we got back in set, that's, I mean, back on set, that's when it really like, started to kick in. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of knew, um, just because I, I was more informed about credits. Oh, so they did. Oh, 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 tired, tired, <laughs> tired <laughs> journey. Is it good? <laughs> um, so, I, but, you know, I knew just by the construct of, of 2018 um, that there was more story to tell, you know, that the yeah. journey wasn't uh, finished. So, you know, had a pretty good idea that there would be a, uh, sequel. Uh, now the 
daunting task was how do we yeah. match the success of 2018? Like yeah. 2018, that I mean, was it wasn't insane. easy, but we kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, we were um, a, a, a full on reboot and- um, And you feel like, you know, you've got to kind of not only kind of do what do was done before, but surpass it as well, which is like, which how do you surpass I God? You thought God it was impossible. It was pretty perfect. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, when uh, I originally got the script, uh, it. Well, first of all, I don't know. Did did you go in for to see Matt and Rich's uh, presentation? That six hour. You never went in. <laughs> what? You little fucker. Uh, <laughs> are we live? Yeah. Oh, I'm you sorry. Know, sorry about, <laughs> sorry that, about but, that. But you know, emotions, etc. It's fine. Sorry don't worry. About that. It's all right. That's what you get. You've got the bathroom now. They can't. Uh, they're not going to take it back. Five second delay. Um, <laughs> uh, Matt and Rich, uh, because the story was so big. Yeah. They um, had shown me a, a six hour. A literally six hour presentation of the story yeah. and what was going to go on. And uh, I said, well, the rest of the cast has to see this yeah. because you, you, you won't be able to envision the totality of this amazing story. So it's epic, yeah. most of the cast, um, speaking of which, I think we've actually got a clip of your incredible performance that I think uh, Buffett are very keen to show everybody. I mean, you've seen it, but let's see it again. Do not lie to me again. Why did you come here alone? Do you see death? No more than you. Then why? Why? What is it you will not tell me? I have tried to walk this path with you. We follow your every win. But you don't believe in any of it. And still, I follow. Because all that matters is that you are safe. Booyah. Uh, do you, do Booyah. You that? I mean, and that's why you win the awards, right? Look at uh. you, award-winning. Christopher <laughs> uh, Judge, amazing. I mean, I, I've read a lot bit about, you know, um, how the sort of, like, process of you guys, the way, obviously, the game was made, it was quite, it was quite complicated, you know, because, like, if you've got, like, an intricate scene, if someone's not quite there, they have to kind of go back and do it again, which kind of just feels like acting on super hard mode do you like do you like acting jobs now and you're like yeah whatever yeah this is not god of war mm. <laughs> you um, got that one why right. don't you have to answer well one of the things that god of war has it's uh, it's kind of spoiled me yeah. um now i mean i just i look at jobs and if it's not <laughs> i mean it doesn't have to be god of war but it it does like, have to be you know and not not to be elitist or anything but when, once you get material like that and you get characters yeah, like yeah, these, yeah. it's tough just to, you know, take a job for the money or take a job for to get out of the house or whatever reason that actors take roles for. Um, so it, it's really uh, allowed me to really be picky about what I do. That's, got, that's a great place to be, surely, yeah, though. Absolutely. Yeah, was, award you know, winning. You can add some zeros to those taken me 35 paychecks. years. I didn't, have, <laughs> I didn't right. have that when I was 17 <laughs> years old. Different thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think actually we've got some clips of you guys doing the motion capture now as well. Um, so can you remember what this, where, the, what part of the game this was? Can you, can oh, yeah. you even remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I remember that. This was... Oh, maybe this was the scene that we just watched, I believe, isn't it? Is it the same one? No, I think this is the open your heart to it. Oh, oh, that, is it? Uh, yeah, the yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, Sonny, also, you said that, like, um, like the, your performance, like, in the first one, it was different because you were so much younger. It was, like, harder for them to, like, oh, yeah, capture your face. Scan my face on so, it. like, now we can... Are you much happier now that we can totally see every facial movement? Are you, are you, do you feel better about it? Um, yeah, no, no, definitely. Um, yeah. I feel like I get to... Uh, you know, show more emotion through my facial expressions compared to the last game. Uh, <laughs> you couldn't even really see my face. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's just insane, like, watching myself, especially when we would set, like, go on the mocap stage and you just see, like, a virtual version of yourself. Yeah. It's like a parallel universe. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, it's insane. Well, look, you know, Huge congratulations. I mean, the whole team, you guys have absolutely smashed it. Like, to, so to surpass the original God of War was a, an epic, godly feat within itself, because it was so good. So honestly, to you and all the team, 
massive congratulations. Come on, guys. Thank God of War, brilliant. Thank you so much. And it's been such a pleasure to talk to you. I want you guys to go and celebrate. Yeah. So we will leave you be. <laughs> and uh, while they go off, we're going to head back to the game area where Arnel is a, a little bit nervous. Why are you nervous, Arnel? Oh, I won't lie, Julia. I mean, I'm a little bit worried, a little bit worried. Because before we were beating up the Foot Clan, yeah, I could do that all day. But today, now we're trying to look after sh a little cat in Stray in a dystopian city. But I'm joined by one of the developers of Stray, Swan Martin Reger. Hello, how are Hi. you doing? How are you doing? And he's going to talk us through this wonderful BAFTA nominated game. Now, Swan, there might be a couple of people out there that might be dog people, so they don't know about Stray. So can you tell us what this game is all about? So Stray is an action adventure game uh, that tells the story of this little cat here uh, that falls inside a mysterious uh, cyber city at the beginning of the game and will have to understand this weird place and try to uh, exit it to find his family back. Okay. Like, what, I love, what I love about this is the movements and the animation are so realistic. T tell us, did you mocap some cats to do this? So we did not actually. We know it exists oh, and wow. we had a lot of fun to see those poor little cats, you know, in, in mocap suits trying mm -hmm. to do things. Um, Miko, our uh, cat animator, is very, very talented with keyframe animations. So wow. he was quite uh, happy to, to do that by hand. And also we have a lot of situations in the game without spoiler that are quite dangerous mm -hmm. uh, that we wouldn't want to you ask want a cat. put a real <laughs> animal through, <laughs> yeah. So well, the keyframe animations are so good. It looks so realistic. That's what, like, it made me feel like they must have got a real cat to do this. We do have cats in the office, though. Oh, so, OK. Yeah, we're working office cats? Office cats. Yeah. <laughs> what are their names? They're not the most productive employees, but they're oh, really they do what they like. important. So one of them is Oscar, and the other one is Jude. OK. We Shout out to Oscar right. and Jude. Yes. <laughs> they were used for animation references, obviously. You know, we filmed them jumping around in the office. Oh, wow. Well, they're BAFTA-nominated cats now. They are. They are. <laughs> they're getting more and more, like, star kind of cats. So okay. they're very specific food. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. They're not, they're not uh, messing up their, their office, are they? It's, uh, well, scratching, <laughs> scratching up the desks. We do know. have bits of cardboards on the power buttons because they like to jump on the computers and turning them off. Oh, so, I yeah, see. It's, it's a whole logistic. Yeah, you don't want the development build to just disappear no, because a cat no. sits on it. That wouldn't be great. <laughs> I will say, you guys included one of my favorite achievements in a video game is just meowing. Oh, yes. Whose idea was that? <laughs> that, was, that was very natural. You know, working with cats, they meow all the time, including mm. during very important meetings or calls. And yeah. so that's a very, that's the first thing that came to mind. Having a meow button, be able to meow even during cinematics, oh. that's like the first thing you would need to do uh, if you should do a game with a cat. So. Yeah. Oh, well, there's, there's so many different distinct things you can do, like as cats do in this game, like scratching up furniture, going yes. for naps. What are some of the things that you had to take out of the game or you didn't include that you wanted to? Oh, there was a lot, actually. Like Very, very early in the game, we, we did some kind of brainstorm with all the cat things that we could think about. And that's mm. a basically endless list. You know, they're, they're so inspiring. Uh, but we're a very small team uh, in the South of France, so we, we do have to choose our battles. Mm -hmm. So things that are a bit more complicated, like maybe hunting or uh, you know, everything related to the smell, the vision, those are yes, things that yeah, are a bit more, more tricky to pull out. So we stayed with the basics, which is, yeah, scratching sofas, meowing. That's the, the fun stuff. That's the, that's the fun stuff. Now, tell us about this dystopian city, because obviously Stray is a, finds himself one, uh, wandering around like dystopian city. How did you come up with the concept of looking after such a cute cat in such a downtrodden world? So um, the two co-founders of the studio, uh, Viv and Kula, mm -hmm. um, they used to be uh, artists before starting this journey. And uh -huh. as artists, they were fascinated by a place that no longer exists, actually. There's mm -hmm. the wall city of Kowloon in Hong Kong. Mm. That was a very unique place with uh, a very high density of uh, inhabitants. So the construction looked the most like organic. Mm -hmm. And as artists, they were really inspired and they started to think about their own world based on this reference. And as they went through this and started to build their own uh, universe, they realized that it was the perfect playground for a cat. You know, oh, the wow. amount of small passageway, the hidden things that you can find yeah. around. Also, the very new point of view that it was giving on their, their world uh, was really interesting. And this is when they really had this precise idea and started the company in the team. Amazing. So it's based on a real city as well, then? It's inspired, definitely. Inspired. You know, we, we really want, uh, we like the idea of contrast in general. So we have like a lot of different vibes to different places in the city yeah but uh, yeah, we'll that's incredible well i could talk about this game all day because i love this game but one final question for you this one is 
in this game, you can invert the camera or not. Are you inverted when you play your games or non-inverted? Oh, that's is a very up, good up question. Is up or is up down for you? I don't even remember. It's actually. crucial. It's so it's important. natural. So it sounds like I'm pressing down to look down, so I'm not inverted, right? Oh. Is that correct? So it's not correct, sir. So uh, it's not. I don't it's. Know. Right. I don't know. I'm sorry. We're going to have to throw back to Julia, I'm afraid. <laughs> Julia is. Gonna, <laughs> we're going to play some more stray, but Julia is going to be having another interview over over there. <laughs> Thanks, I know. It's not like a losing battle to try and find as many people who invert. But anyway, it's the whole thing. Um, so I'm extremely excited about our next guests, as I'm a huge fan of the game, and it's an indie game that's taken the industry by storm. Uh, let's take a look at the hugely successful, that's a massive understatement, Vampire Survivors. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> guys, okay, please welcome some of the team from Vampire Survivors, George Morgan and Matthew Granulan. Nominate, come on, more cheers than that, they've got best game. Come on, guys, put your backs in it. Wow, Jesus. Yeah. How are you doing? You seem like a bit, like, spaced out. Is this a lot? This yeah. feels like a lot. Yeah, just a little bit. It's a lot. <laughs> it's, like, really a lot. It's just a lot. I yeah, mean, this whole thing's been a lot, just, though. It's all just been a lot. We just need maybe this should just be the quiet time. We'll just sit here really quietly for a <laughs> minute, and just have just just re. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Like, were you first of all? Were you surprised by the amount of nominations before we even get to the wins? Were you surprised by the amount? Yes. Yeah. We didn't expect much, and to get nominated for five awards was just an honor in itself. Yeah. Yeah, and then. To, to win two of them, you know, was also pr pretty amazing. Best game, though. Yeah. Best game, though. It means the best game. The yeah. big one. It's the big one. I mean, when we won, we won, it was original property. No, it was no. game design. Game design. <laughs> This, that's how no, it doesn't been. matter. Best game sort of trumps a lot of them in a weird sort of strange yeah. way. That's all you can hear from that point. I mean, obviously, I know, you know, Vampire Survivors was like this huge kind of labour of love for like Luca and the team. I mean, how did it start for both of you guys? Like, what was the kind of start point? Uh, so I've known Luca for a good few years. And for me, like, it started when we were during the pandemic. We yeah. were just kind of having Zoom calls and like meet, each making our own little game. And then we'd kind of encourage each other, and then, you know, we'd all online help game each jam. Other's. Yeah, basically online game jam. Yeah. And we'd encourage each other to do little bits or help them out when we needed. Mm. And then, you know, Luca published his game, and <laughs> things <laughs> happened in between. And now we've won best game. So <laughs> that's the short version. <laughs> yeah, this is short version. <laughs> well, what was the inspiration behind it? Apart from obviously, like, what? I mean, obviously it's vampires, right? But like, what was what was the kind of unique thing that was like, ah, that's what I'm doing. Like, that's a unique thing. I, mean, I think I think for Luca, he, he loved prototyping. He loved making yeah. his own. Game. He loved making his own little thing, um, and yeah, he, he just he made this and he put a, an asset pack over the top of it and then changed a lot of the <laughs> asset pack and then <laughs> and then yeah, he had this thing that he just he loved the look of it, he loved the feel of it, um, yeah, and it kind of just went from there really. Yeah, I mean, it's that, it's that sort of game that sometimes when I, when I look at sort of like, you know, what's kind of coming out and stuff, you know when a game has like a certain aesthetic and you make assumptions about it? I feel like it's very one of those games, like everyone's playing it and I was like, but I, th I feel like it's, I don't know, like a sort of like mad gauntlet. Like, <laughs> what's going on? Like, I've, I feel like I've played gauntlet, you know? And then when you actually play it, you're like, well, it's so different. Sometimes that aesthetic, but I don't know. Everyone else saw through it. I was the one who a bit <laughs> let it to the party. Um, I mean, how good are you guys at the game though, really, I suppose is one question. Pretty. I, I mean, yeah. Well, I'm I'm the QA, so I've I've been playing it a lot. You've, so you know, you've, you've seen some things. <laughs> I've seen you've a few had things. some moments. I've made some devs very sad, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's the job of a QA. It's fine. <laughs> it was always on in the background. Um, so like we, you know, we'll, we all work from home. We're all remote. Um, and it's always on. You always yeah. see it. Like it pops up. We work on Discord as well, so you see it pop up in someone's on their name, you know, playing Vampire Survivors. You know they're not, but yeah. it's on somewhere. <laughs> it's on somewhere. Yeah, somewhere in the world, it's someone's just, playing Vampire Survivors. Even in the team, it's so strange. <laughs> like, what are you doing at lunchtime? So I'm playing Vampire Survivors. 
I, just, but I love it. You just <laughs> love it so <laughs> much. I mean, I suppose one of the things is, um, you know, kind of in this era of like very big kind of triple A titles. I mean, you know, the fact that you're kind of like surprised by best game, but like I suppose that's one thing that BAFTA always does really well is like it's not that kind of thing between triple A and smaller. It's not just like oh, there's like an indie subsection. It's all like so. I mean, do you think do you think people are kind of understanding that it doesn't really matter how quote unquote big a game is? I mean, maybe your win is going to help people move past that in their heads. What do you I think? Mean, yeah, possibly. I mean, it'd be great if it does. Um, even ourselves, you know, we were sat on this on waiting, um, watching the awards. And when we, you know, we heard Elden Ring and we heard God of War and, and then we heard us and we kind of all, we had a little giggle to ourselves. Like, you know, these games are huge and they're phenomenal games. Um, yeah, and then to hear us be read out afterward, I, I, th I was saying to a few people, I think I laughed from my chair to the stage. <laughs> I just didn't stop what? laughing. What? Because the whole thing Sorry. was so surreal, you know. With... Can you remember being on the stage? No. Yeah, of course not. I just not. remember being downstairs. I was like, <laughs> how did I get here? <laughs> this is all very strange. <laughs> well, look, um, huge congratulations. Thank you. Epic win. Let's give them a big round of applause. Come on, best game. So thank yeah. you so much to George Morgan <laughs> and Matthew Granolan. <laughs> Head back to the party, have a sit down, maybe a cup of tea or something and enjoy yourself. So huge congratulations. Okay. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I can take much more of this. It's a bit like Piccadilly Circus in here. It's all, it's all go, but you know what? Um, I hope you at home are still with us and enjoying all of our guests. And remember to keep getting involved on the Twitch chat using the hashtag BAFTA Games Awards. Yes, so. Oh, Julia. Oh, wait. Oh, there you are. Sorry, yeah. I was like, where's that voice coming from? Julia. Yes. You never, you never guess what. Don't leave that. You never guess what, Julia. What's happening? Listen. I was Mind out the way of Vampire Survivors. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, best game, guys. Come yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Uh, you, never, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you never guess what happened, right? What? I was chilling in the bar. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, guess who I see? Shuhei Yoshida. Oh, <laughs> captain, my captain. Oh, look at this. How are you doing? Do you want to put, you can put your BAFTA okay, down. Is it you. heavy? It's very heavy. It's I don't think this table heavy. can manage it. Look. Oh. Julia, is today a manufacturer's cup or a nation's <laughs> cup? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Joke, yeah, yeah, no, it's a Gran Turismo joke. It's a Gran Turismo. Well, thing. today was Nation's Cup for you, oh, I feel. Yeah. A lot of others were manufacturer series. It's a very, like, Gran <laughs> Turismo <laughs> specific <laughs> reference there. But Shuhei, hello, welcome. Thank you mm. so much for coming. Thank and uh, you. what a night. I mean, how did that feel being up on that stage, standing ovation, rightly so? Yes. Was strange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I always came to these events and to you know support the developers. Yeah. You know they get nominated. Yeah. They, they spend like so many years making game and uh, you know some developers get award, others don't. Yeah. So I have to like uh, take care of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Celebrate together, or if they didn't win, I have to be there to kind of like yeah. oh I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Have always some next game. Yeah. Next <laughs> yeah. Game. So, <laughs> So when I, I'm on the receiving end, I didn't know what to do with me, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but you could see how, uh, like, you know, you've touched so many people's yeah. lives in your illustrious career. You've, you know, helped so many people achieve their dreams of games. Mm -hmm. And like, I mean, beloved. I mean, that's why you got the fellowship, right? <laughs> beloved. That, that was my job to what, to be help, beloved. Uh, oh, oh, no, no, <laughs> help, help developers. Yeah, yeah of to course. To complete, you know, their dreams, games. Well, yeah. well Shihei, you you've been with PlayStation since its inception. Day. You've, you've seen the birth of so many amazing games and franchises. I want to know. <laughs> All right, here we go. What's one of your favorites? Oh, favorite, you, favorite. Yeah. Right. yeah. I do have one. I you do? Are you allowed to pick? Yeah, yeah. Or or yeah. The one, one that <laughs> I, was, I was so fortunate to be mm. involved in making was Journey. Yeah. Oh. Journey. Oh. We, I, that game we were talking we about were literally, it. I was like, we Journey is literally yeah. one of my top 10 mm -hmm. gaming experiences. The secret sneaky multiplayer that you didn't realize was multiplayer. Yeah. You're like, that yeah. character's moving weird. Yeah. No character in a game. Why are they jumping up and down like that? Why are they following me? Why are they following me? Are What's following going me? on? And then you're like, wow. And when you jump and they jump. Yeah. 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 And then people will come back and help you. And it was they like, would. it was like, yeah. suddenly like, games are good. People so are good. Careful. People yeah. are good. And yeah. as you play through the game, yeah. you, know, you realize this is about the life and death of a human being. I'm actually right? going to cry a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, stop it. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> um, amazing, amazing game. So. Um, well, we are so proud uh, that you're the, uh, the uh, BAFTA fellow. But I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, there was a lot of other awards, a lot of other things happening on stage. Yeah. What were kind of some of your highlights? Who were you pleased to see when well, tonight? Yeah, so in my role, current role, mm -hmm. I was so, so 
expecting, hoping that stray team will win something. Yeah. You know, they are, they've done amazing Fantastic games. Yeah. And the last yeah. year is so fun to watch people play and their uh, pet cat react it's to beautiful. what's going on in mm -hmm. on the screen. And uh, yeah. yeah, so so we had really, really fun time working with you know, Annapurna Interactive and the Blue 12 team. And uh, they so deserve you know this this mm. this mm. year's nominations, great yeah, nominations. Of and, uh, yeah, and uh, unfortunately they didn't win. But, but you that know how means... many people loved Listen, that game, though? Yeah, that's yeah, not, yeah, you yeah, know, like yeah. people loved yeah. that game. And yeah. to be nominated as well for a BAFTA, that's big enough. Yeah, absolutely. Just putting that on the CV. Have you been nominated for a BAFTA? I'm not, I'm waiting for no, my CV. Neither so. of us yeah, have, you know, so, you know, we one can't day. say anything. Yeah. One, one day. But, but, <laughs> but other highlight was yeah. the, you know, Horizon, you know, for BAFTA yes. got the best technology. Yeah, did, and, yeah. Uh, and, uh, Elden Ring and God of War, amazing games, mm -hmm. you know. It's a tough, they, yeah. The, the Guerrilla Games teams uh, got lots of nominations, but, you know, didn't win much uh, uh, awards. So I was so happy to see them on the stage accepting the award. So. Just think of the joy, though. I try to think of it in joy. It's not about the wins. It's oh. about the hours, hundreds and hundreds of hours of, well, joy. How much Elden Ring. you were smiling while you played. Well, maybe not Elden Ring, because I was No, you don't smile cross, playing Elden Ring. But, like, the joy, <laughs> yeah. generally the joy. And, and uh, for many of us in the industry, the industry BAFTA has some special, you know, space. You know, it's such a prestigious yeah. award owner. Mm. Uh, he got the fellowship now. Look, at, look at this look one. At hey, look how shiny. Look how shiny. shiny. This one look is more shinier than the others. Of course it I, is, because it's so. the biggest one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've actually been asking the viewers at home, because obviously, yeah. the you know, do people invert their controllers? Do they not? And we thought we'd just end this discussion about inverted controllers it's a big, once and big for all, question. because people keep talking about it all the time. We need to move on. <laughs> and move on with our lives. So <laughs> you still probably have the same answer as before, but I can tell you that the answer is, yeah. and now we can stop talking about it, Okay. is 89% say no, they You're wrong. don't invert. <laughs> you can't go against democracy, I know. It's Shuhei. democracy. When, when I want to see up, I push up to control. <laughs> <laughs> I'm heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you're behind some of my favorite titles. What, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Just, would you way, accept democracy, please? Do. I, I think these people are smarter than us. Uh -huh. Yeah, because okay. uh, we are so simple, right? We push up. <laughs> 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 that, 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 Don't have it. Combat, I like you know, the way you the, put the it. Axis and Very the, true. Right? <laughs> well, honestly, yeah. Shuhei, this is such an honour to be able and to And a delight, here frankly. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, it does turn out like legends are like buses, you know? Because you know what? You wait around for ages, yeah. like, for one year, and then Don't all of a sudden, another one comes along. Guess who's coming to join us? Is it a bus? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's BAFTA Games host <laughs> Sorry, I know Frankie it's Frankie. Ward. I can see her right there. <laughs> you can't be mistaken for a bus. You're basically a silver statue. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I was you just like, you why are you all the way down, down there? there? I was so not sorry. saying that. I was trying to big you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the, the big bus. <laughs> <laughs> that was Julia. To be fair, that was me. How was that? Oh, you smashed it. Oh, thank you. You're right, you're like slowly calming down. How much adrenaline is in your system right now? Um, I don't all of no, it. I, I haven't been able to eat yet. I, I went and had some of the food, but I didn't eat much of the food. I was still kind of like, oh. No, you need like at least half an hour to yeah. like decompress. Don't yeah. worry, this, this is the debrief area. You yeah. can chill with us. Oh, yeah. There we go. Take, take, the take the shoes off. Take the shoes off. Okay, shoes I'm so off. sorry. Shoes off. Shoes Honestly, off. there is a page on the internet reserved for this shot. It's all right. So just be <laughs> careful, Everyone cameraman. On Wiki feet will be very. Uh -oh. Yeah, remember we were having a conversation about this the other day, and I've got <laughs> ne I've got a nearly perfect score. That's all I'm saying. There we go. Well, she hates all free to take the shot. You know. Thirty seconds. There we go. There we go. I told you it descended to chaos very quickly. Listen, it seems like we're we're like, yeah. We've had a fantastic show. Frankie did an amazing job hosting yeah. it. We got fellowship winner right here. Mm. And, and I mean, I don't mean to brag, but we did a fantastic job. <laughs> All right. Don't have to sell it. Frankie, what's mm -hmm. some, of, some of your highlights of the night? Oh, uh, well, the fact I mean, that I, I managed to, like, not cry. You also mispronounced your child's I name. mispronounced my <laughs> own daughter's <laughs> name. That was genius. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's the first thing my husband said to me. Yep. Was, you, know, um, you know, someone's going to clip that and it's going to come back in 10 years' It'll time. It'll be Eva Wilson <laughs> will clip that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, picture us this time last year, poor Julia having COVID and uh, <laughs> me presenting with six months pregnant Eva Wilson yes. on the sofa and being yeah. like, by the way, I might have named my child after you. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so now the whole world knows that yeah. um, not only did I do that, but uh, I actually can't pronounce the name. So no, but honestly, that was like literally the only thing. Like the only, like the whole. It was flawless. perfect. It was flawless. flawless. <laughs> Apart from the one. That, that's why hosting is hilarious because you will mess up the simplest thing. You'll be worried about something else. Oh, I've and messed then, up multiple things. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't Look worry at about this that. Now. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Now. I would really like to know what you've messed up to make myself feel better right now. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> we've had we've had some moments. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's just beautiful to kind of like Indeed. be here. What, what's your plan for the rest of the evening? What you, first of all, you can't lose this, so you need to give yeah, it to yeah. someone. Yeah, You need to sensible. This is heavy. Where, where is where is it going to go? Where are you going to put it? Uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in my in my uh, living room. In your living room. Nice. If you have a very heavy fire door, mm. it, this would keep it open. Not that you should keep fire doors <laughs> open, but should you need to? Mm. <laughs> should you need to? Well, sh I don't know. For a minute, like maybe you're moving furniture, Frankie. Well, you don't know about this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're basically saying it's a it's a glorified doorstop. Is well, what also, you're it's quite subtle, you know. Like if you put it on a mantelpiece, everyone's like, mm, are you putting your bathroom on the mantelpiece? You're like, where? Actually? Well, we were saying earlier, Shuhei, out of anybody in the games industry. Mm. Your gaming collection is the one that I want to see. Yeah, the we want to come around your house. Can we come around your house? Yes, please. Is that weird? Is that weird? <laughs> and mostly now it's digital, so oh. I can show you okay. my, my dashboard. Oh, oh. that's what I'm right. yeah. really <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> I, I felt and like you I have, go like, to tools. Epic Store every week to download the free. Oh, yeah. 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 Who doesn't? Yeah. Who doesn't? Yeah. Who doesn't but, but like I, free? I don't play them. Yeah, I just download them. Yeah, yeah. Collect them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pokemon. Anyway, look, thank you so much for joining us. Frankie, you are amazing. We are in awe of your wonderment. Mm -hmm. And we've come to the end of our journey together, Frankie. Oh, no. What, yeah. I, it's been a fantastic night, it though. It has been. What a night. It's been highs, lows, everything in between. Sorry, am I supposed to say something? All right, then. Yeah, thank you yeah. so much again for watching. <laughs> we will see you now. I was just listening to you speak oh, your just, words. Oh, yeah, just, I was in the moment. You thought I was monologuing, I eh? oh, okay. monologuing. Sorry. Anyway, we will see you again next year for the BAFTA Games Awards in 2024. But until then, make sure you save your game. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see you later. Bye. See you later. Yay!